Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? This is Instructor Mike, and this is going to be a special show. It's snowing outside. If you are in the Chicago, Chicagoland area, you already know we're getting inches. No pun intended. Somebody else is getting inches, too. So get to the yams. I'm sorry. That was too soon. Too soon, baby. Okay, so uh, we're going to go in and have this special show, um, and it's going to talk about a recap of the Illinois House Bill 5855 meeting. For those of you all who don't know, this is the assault weapons ban or otherwise known as Protect Illinois Communities. I was in attendance at this meeting and I've taken a lot of notes, a lot of notes. So we're gonna talk about those things. By the way, if you're in here, don't forget to hit that like comment, subscribe button, uh, bell for notifications, all that great stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to play my intro music, and then we're going to go on ahead and move. Sorry, I had to let me readjust this rat. It was right in the right spot. All right, good. I'm going to go on ahead and play my intro music, and we will get to it. Don't go anywhere. Let's go. What's going on, you? This is Instructor Mike. You can follow me on Facebook at Mike Brown or Instructor Mike. You can follow it me on could Facebook. be you as a citizen, and you walk up and you see somebody. Look, you look heavy. I don't know. Be special. That must be. But it's good to know that this can handle the high pressure rounds of a plenty. Make eye contact with me. He's still trying to get it open a couple of times. So chill. All right, what's going on, you all? All right, so let's hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, this is going to be on my podcast uh, as well, on the mic with Mike. Uh, I'm not even so much worried about how many people are watching. They'll watch later, or maybe not, who knows. Uh, but this is just going to be, um, yeah, I'm going to give you the 10 fast facts, 10 fast facts, and then we're going to go into detail because I did take a lot of notes. And this is an honest conversation that uh, should be had uh, regarding this. Okay, please, if you're watching via Instructor Mike, uh, I don't know how Facebook numbers are going to do, but I know that YouTube numbers will be good. And that's always good. So if you're watching this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, hit the bell for notifications. I do know this. Too. Let me give you um, a little bit of this, a little bit of a disclaimer, so to speak. I know that my voice is my voice okay um when i started this youtube page i did not start it with uh followers or subscribers in mind i started it as a point of educating people about things relative to the uh criminal justice system and relative to just providing just general education it has gotten bigger to the point where Sometimes you begin to lose perspective as to the original reason why you even started your channel. Uh, and sometimes we look at follower counts, subscriber counts and things like that. And then, you know, you you think about whether or not your message is making the impact before. I would just put videos out there. And if people watch, they watch If They didn't. They didn't. You know, just a place for me to send people to. And so I'm just going to give back to that. So, you know, if you guys like it, you subscribe. Cool. If not, that's fine, too. It'll reach who it's supposed to reach. When it's supposed to reach, don't stop. Keep going. OK, I hope you all are doing good. Hey, Dan, what's going on, man? What is going on? What is going on, sir? In the great state of Texas, man, who have I had to do things differently? I know you probably saying the same thing too. George Parks. Thank you. I appreciate the love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Eric, what's going on, sir? What's going on? Please tell me. Stick. Please stick around. And if Facebook kicks you off, because that's what Facebook tends to do to my content and stuff like that, please go over to YouTube, watch, hit the subscribe button, bell for notifications, all that great stuff. Uh, David Young, what's going on? What's going on? Calvin Carbine, what's going on, sir? Aaron, uh, Aaron Ragusa, what's going on? Chicago Southside, 
and Practical Ken. What's going on? What's going on? All right. I know it's a snowstorm out there. So by the way, uh, for those of you all who are listening, because this also this audio is also going to be played on my podcast, On the Mic with Mike. In the event you got to dip out and you got to go, you can always catch the replay of this either on the YouTube channel or on my podcast, On the Mic with Mike, available on Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify, any place where you can find a podcast because I will play this. This is very important. If you are a person uh, who is for the Second Amendment, and if you are a person who's demanding action, I'm going to tell you this. I was in attendance at this meeting, and uh, this was my first time, actually, uh, attending one of these types of meetings. It was very revealing. It really was. Uh, I had never been there. I've been to the Blandick building before, but I've never been uh, to one of these meetings. And so um, it was educational. Uh, it was definitely something worth, I'm trying to find the news clip that I'm going to use. Uh, it was definitely something worth watching. Um, no, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. Uh, I'm sorry. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Bear with me. Bear with me. Where are you at, Fox 32? All right. Let me see. That's the one that I'm looking at, too. It had a more in-depth. Uh, all right. That's... No, no. Day three of the hearing. Uh, is this the one? Yeah. This is this is it. Let me see something here. Oh, yeah, dude. We could watch this. Ah, uh, yes, we could watch this. Hey, for real. It's three hours. They probably started in the beginning. Matter of fact, yeah, I might stream this and then we could watch it, parts of it. I'll kind of bounce in and out because I didn't even know that WGN was live streaming it. They got three hours. The hearing actually lasted longer. Uh, so we'll we'll watch that. And uh, in watching that, I will tell you this. That uh, let me give you 10 fast facts. OK, one, this Illinois House Bill 5855 is a carbon copy of the elements of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994 vis-a-vis the Clinton Crime Bill, okay? Uh, it does seek to ban certain weapons that they term as semi uh, as, uh, assault weapons. It also seeks to put a cap on the uh, amount of rounds that can be carried in so-called high-capacity magazines, okay? Okay. Um, this will pass and become law. They do have the numbers to make this pass. Please believe this will pass and become law. And so uh, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. I think these hearings are rather procedural uh, and they definitely give voice. Uh, but there were some other things that I will uh, show you. Yeah, 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 we'll get to that. Uh, I will show you. Uh, in this hearing, I didn't know that WGN was streaming this hearing live. I did not know that. I saw the cameras in the room, but I did not know that they were streaming it. Um, yeah, I see 29 views and 17 likes, 35 views and 17 likes. If you are watching via YouTube and you value this channel for the algorithm, for the algorithm, okay? If you value this conversation, please smash that like button. Please, 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 please. I greatly appreciate that. Um, let's see. I was on another YouTube page. Okay, good. Let me move this over here. Yes, I do have to produce my own show. So bear with me as I, uh, do what I have to do. Okay. Uh, just bear with me, uh, because I do have to amend certain things. Uh, I like the fact that they did live stream this so good. I can go on ahead and place this here. Just bear with me for a minute. Um, here we go. Moms demand action and proponents of uh, the bill, House Bill 5855, were in the room. Oh, my God. They were so deep in the room. Man, they were deep in the room. Meanwhile, opponents of the bill, very few. Very few. And that's just for this meeting. Because there are meetings in Springfield and there are meetings there was two meetings in Chicago, right? 
The first one, I believe, was in the Springfield. The second two were in Chicago. And the last two are going to be in Springfield, a total of five, I believe. OK, so there's two more hearings on this bill scheduled uh, in Springfield. I'm going to be going down to one or both of those hearings. Um, yeah, but in Chicago, um, the presence was not as strong for people who were proponents of the bill. Uh, so that's definitely concerning. OK, uh, the NRA was there. The Illinois State Rifle Association was there. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Eric. I agree. A thousand percent. Uh, it's pointless. They're going to walk this through, Mike. This is just a brass and pony show. No, you're fine. It's all good. I agree with you. That's exactly what's going to happen. So for those people that are talking about, well, this may not pass. You don't understand Illinois politics. This is going to pass. It's going to pass. They got the numbers already. This is just procedural, right? Now, these hearings are important, but I'm going to give you more information, okay? NRA was there. Uh, Illinois State Rifle Association was there in terms of spokespersons scheduled to testify. Uh, Todd Vandermeer was there. Illinois Gun Owners Associate uh, Together was there. Um, the chapter, I believe, one of the National African American Gun Association members were there. But no one was, yeah, yeah, fair enough. You say less, I already know. I know it for a fact too. I, I trust me, I know. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, here we go. National African American Gun Association. Now, those of you all who have followed me, right, you know that I've been critical of that association, not for the fact that it represents African Americans, like some people want to put me in that box. That's not it. National Latino Gun Owners Association, they got an association. Uh, eight, they, there are various associations that advocate for, you know, people of a different culture or race, right? That's not the issue. But if you're going to if you're going to call yourself a national organization, you should show up in areas of importance to those you represent on a national level. Right. And so correct me if I'm wrong. If they did speak up, please let me know which meeting and when and what was said. But in this hearing in Chicago, nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. I find that troubling, extremely troubling. They were not there. Also, who was not there? And if I'm wrong, correct me. No one ever catches the if I'm wrong, correct me parts when I try to remain neutral and fair in my arguments, but I'm still going to say it. Guess who else was not there? The U.S. Concealed Carry Association, USCCA, was not there, right? Now, I can also say CCW Safe was not there, right? But CCW Safe doesn't go in and infiltrate people's classrooms to advocate the importance of their products, right? I will say USCCA does. Now, why am I hard on USCCA? I'm hard on USCCA because with as much fervorance, if you will, right? If I'm using that term correctly, that you say in your speeches in these various classrooms, Chicagoans have to stand up. Chicagoans have to protect themselves. Chicagoans have to this, Chicagoans have to that, right? And I'm going to get critical on the NRA too because the NRA falls in this same box, right? Where are you guys at? You're there to take the people's money for these various insurance problems, right? Well, here we go. You said USCCA will go where it benefits their pockets only. There's nothing to gain in Illinois at this point. I'm going to give you another thing to take into consideration, Dan, right? Another thing to take, because I'm telling you that that was my next point. I got my stuff written down. So come on now. We're going to have a good show. The advocacy against the ban and for the reasons, right? Horrible. Oh, my Lord. Horrible. 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 NRA's advocacy for more than just the gun, as well as the absence of USCCA, 
as well as the absence of the National African American Gun Association. Horrible. And let me tell you why. They love to use black people to advocate that gun control is racist and that Ida B. Wells said a rifle should be on every table. They will use those things to spark the conscience of those who decide to put black people's issues first because of political capital. But they're nowhere to be found in Illinois in ground zero to represent those who have actually been victims of crimes. And I'm going to tell you what they could have done. So tag your favorite USCCA instructor in this. Tag your favorite. Look, this ain't a I hate Mike session, right? That's fine. You, you don't have to like me. But this is going to be informative because I'm going to give you a blueprint. I'm going to give you a blueprint of what they could have done that could have bolstered the testimony on the record, right? I'm going to give you something they could have used to bolster the testimony on the record. See, yes, it may pass. It will, it will pass. It will pass for sure. But there are things that you can do to affect the hearts and minds of those to give them something to think about. And that's what's not being done, right? Next point, here we go. Justice for those who will be affected by this, right? The, the opponents of the bill will likely come from the Supreme Court of the United States via the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case, right? So you're not going to get justice talking to them, uh, so to speak. You see what I'm saying? You should still say what you need to say and get it on the record because it might affect, but it's going to pass, right? This will likely not be dealt with until the matter reaches the Supreme Court if they take it under certiorari. Yes, William, what I'm saying is this. Start right now looking for your 10-round magazines. Start right now looking for your 10-round magazines. Now, I'm going to tell you where there could have been some areas for negotiation. Come on, y'all. Stick with me. Stick with me. See, I can't. Some of you all want to sit here and say, Mike, get to the point. Well, I am a teacher, right? I'm not one of those curriculum regurgitating instructors. I'm an actual teacher. This is I'm an educator. So this isn't a hurry up and get to the point. So if you got to go, I understand. Catch the replay on the podcast, right? And I'm going to drop the link and you all are free to come up because I would love to get your opinions about this, right? Here we go. The House representatives, Eric, are you still here? Please let me know you're still here. The House representatives were asking for solutions from the 2A opponents of the bill who were in the panel. The representatives who were there we're asking for solutions. And those who were there from the various organizations advocating for a second amendment, they didn't have any solutions that I thought would be workable enough to give the representatives pause. And I'll get to that in depth. This is gonna be a very educational show, okay? So let's get to it. Sheriff Dart received a lot of criticism from those who were against the bill, right? And by the way, what's my position? I'm in the middle. I'm independent, okay? I am for the Second Amendment, but there's another part of this that we're not looking at, okay? And I understand here is going to be the show where if you're so Second Amendment, you can't see it from the other side, I lose your subscription today. I lose your followership today. Because this is a conversation that the 2A community is not necessarily having. And we need to have that conversation. Let's continue. Sheriff Dart was the most impactful speaker. From law enforcement, Sheriff Dart was the most impactful speaker. He was. And even though people gave Sheriff Dart some issues, not the state representatives, not the House committee, right? 
not the people who are for the bill. The people who are against the bill had negative things to say about Sheriff Dart. I did. And let me tell you why. When we get to that section, it's coming up. It's coming up. Here we go. Representative Willis, Kathleen Willis, you know who she is. If you're in Illinois politics and you understand the gun issue, right? Here we go. Representative Willis was open to defining the term large capacity. She said it on the record, whether it be 10, whether it be 12 rounds, whether it be 15, I don't know, right? She was open to the defining of that. I'm going to tell you where there could have been some negotiation, right? Even if we negotiated and got terms fixed and they still passed the bill, negotiation wouldn't stop you from still filing suit to get it overturned. You see what I'm saying? And this is what's troubling with the representatives who were there because there was no give or take. There were no solutions that were really offered. You know, um, Ed Sullivan of the Illinois State Rifle Association was contradictory in one of the statements and questions that he answered from one of the representatives who asked him a question. Uh, and that too was troubling. When shootings happen, that's when these uh, entities activate, okay? So without further ado, those were, and I know I said 10, that's probably 11, all right? So let me go on ahead and dive right into uh, the notes that I've taken, okay? So those representatives who, all right, I'm glad people are answering your uh, questions regarding that. Um, here we go. So it was in the Blandick Building, uh, the House Judiciary uh, Criminal Committee that was there, uh, Representative Slaughter. Bob Morgan is the sponsor of the bill. Uh, Representative Ford, uh, McConley, was it McCombie? I might have said that wrong. Representative Willis, Representative Grant was there. Uh, in the beginning, they referenced the Juarez high school shooting, asked for a moment of silence, you know, uh, in that given situation. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's troubling, so to speak, um, but it is that, again, when shootings like that happen, that's when people who are against guns, their power gets activated. Does that make sense? When shootings happen and when bodies drop, that's when their powers get activated. It's no different from a drug crew wanting to be free from the police. What do they do? Try as best they can to minimize homicides because more attention is paid when bodies start dropping because when bodies start dropping, voters get activated. When voters get activated, the police have to do something. And so homicide is bad for narcotics business. The same thing goes for the Second Amendment. Homicide is bad for the Second Amendment. It, it's bad. It, it, in some cases, some people would say it's good, right? Because what does it do? Drive up sales, drive up fear, cause more classes to come to be. You see what I'm saying? If you're watching, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, all that great stuff. It gets more people into the conversation, gets the algorithms going if you value this conversation. Okay. So first up was Director Kelly. Uh, first up was Director Kelly. Uh, from the Illinois State Police. He was talking about firearms enforcement. He was talking about the FOID Review Board. So earlier you all heard me talk about uh, the 10,000 plus people who were in. And Eric, if uh, Eric, if you're still watching, maybe you know who our mutual friend could watch this maybe later or listen to it later. It's kind of a recap. Um, no pressure at all. Uh, but it was 10,000 plus people who got their FOIA cards, things like that, revoked under Section 8F of the uh, uh, FOIA Card Act, which is the clear and present danger. Um, I gave Brendan Kelly his props as the Illinois State Police Director. Before, I didn't understand it. I can honestly say I didn't understand it because it seemed to be and could be still construed as an egregious constitutional violation to then uh, activate emergency orders and then go back retroactively to six or eight years and then revoke all of those people who had a clear and present danger. But when you look at it objectively, 
it does make sense. First of all, the uh, the statute as the way it was written puts the reviews of things like this and other things that are revocations into the hands of the director of the Illinois State Police. To my recollection, Brendan Kelly is not a qualified mental health professional, but he is a attorney, a licensed attorney, and by virtue of his position is a sworn law enforcement officer, even though he's appointed. So it's kind of a little different, right? But he is the first person who was an attorney, right? He's the first person who was an attorney uh, who was able to think like a lawyer. The other directors, Leo Schmidt, career law enforcement, Hiram Grau, career law enforcement, Jonathan Monikin, never been law enforcement, but political appointee, uh, former army officer. That was weird. But uh, who else was there? Um, um, what come on, Terrence Grainer, uh, law enforcement, right? Career law enforcement. Those are the only only state police directors that come to mind right away. Um, and I'm sure there have been others, but career law enforcement. You see what I'm saying? Brendan Kelly is the only person who was an attorney. So because he was an attorney, he was able to think like a lawyer because of what happened in July 4th with Robert Cremo climbing that tower, pop, 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 reloading, pop, 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 things like that. And so state police came under fire for the clear and present danger, right? And so Brendan Kelly is being asked to talk about this, talk about this. State police, how'd you let this slip up? State police, how'd you let that slip up? You look at the Henry Platt uh, situation in Aurora where there was a person who was granted a FOIA card, but then it was the situation where uh, it was a concealed carry application. And so it was a confusion between the two. And then guess who's called to the stand to have to testify as to the mishap with that? Illinois State Police. Brendan Kelly is like, look, I ain't got time for this. I'm an attorney. If called to the stand to testify, I can't even answer as to my qualifications to be able to assess this person's mental health status. So I tell you what, concealed carry has a licensing review board in Illinois but they can't do it for the FOIA card because they would be burdened with too much work, just like we're burdened with too much work. So let's go on ahead and create another FOIA licensing review, review board made up of the same numbers of people, seven, right? Same numbers of people. So then you got a FOIA review board and then you've got a concealed carry licensing review board, two separate entities, right? Kind of overseen by the Illinois State Police to give them administrative support, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and so let them decide once a trigger triggers a revocation, let them decide so it falls on them, right? So I can understand it from Director Kelly's uh, position. I think he honestly did a great job with that because if I was in his position, I would have wanted that out of my hands and into the hands of somebody else who was more qualified. And amongst those board members who, by the way, have not yet been filled. And in fairness, possibly the reason they have not been filled is because the constitutional officers who have just been reelected, the governor, de uh, not deputy, but lieutenant governor, uh, attorney general, secretary of state, all these constitution uh, office holders, right, elected officials don't get sworn in until after January. So since they don't get sworn until after January, I think if I'm thinking like J.B. Pritzker, the governor of the state of Illinois, He's probably like, I don't want to appoint people to these boards, right, who then get settled into their positions only for me to then lose the election. Those of you all in Illinois, you know he wasn't going to lose. Darren Bailey had no chance of winning. That's a whole other discussion. I can talk about that later, right? But it makes no sense for me to approve these boards, then lose the election only for these board members to be replaced by board members established and appointed by a new governor. So let's go ahead and win the election. We've already established the rules. We've already written the law that says, you said January 11th, right? Well, all, we already uh, written the law. The law is already in force. The board has already been, the, the structure of the board has already been established, right? Once the swearing in takes place, then we can go on ahead and appoint the board members and then they can get to the work of doing these appeals and then everything will be set right the way it's supposed to be. So that way, God forbid, anybody who we might have just overturned the decision and didn't do anything about, they will get the proper assessment they need to get by the boards appointed to do that. And if everything is right, 
they'll get their stuff back. So it's a minor inconvenience for a major fix, if you will. You see what I'm saying? So if I look at it objectively, right, objectively, not subjectively, but objectively, this makes sense, right? And if there is a lawsuit that comes out of that, well, then they'll probably settle the lawsuit, right? Why would they do that? Because the people asked for this issue to be fixed. If the people want the issue to be fixed, the issue costs money. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I had to look at it objectively and it makes sense. So I hope it does play out the way I assume it will play out. Okay. Continuing. Uh, they talked about it. I'm going to read your comments in a minute. You guys keep going. Uh, you said, and I wonder what the statistics are that uh, on guns that were acquired illegally involved in mass shootings, uh, mass shooting incidents versus legal. That should be taken into consideration. Uh, Robert Cremo acquired his legally. There are a few people. Uh, that, that's a good question. But I do know Robert Cremo. Uh, uh, required his uh, acquired his legally. Okay, uh, let's continue. I do want to make good use of your time. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brendan Kelly talked about that it was good progress. They've gone from 97 days in processing FOI cards to 22 days. Brendan Kelly even said it himself, the director of the state police, he's trying to move from bureaucracy to a focus on safety and enforcement, which confirmed what I had already suspected. And that's attorney thinking. That's attorney thinking. I can totally respect that uh, and understand it. And it takes somebody who thinks like that to drive. And I don't know Director Kelly personally, but putting myself in his shoes, that, that stuff makes sense, right? Uh, administrative rules on uh, clear and pleasant danger, erring on the side of public safety. Uh, they talked about 1 million in grants that's available to local law enforcement agencies to assist. So he pretty much just gave a rundown of uh, these things. He was talking about firearm restraining orders that it is not being used enough, that it should be used more, right? So be on the lookout. They are going to start a campaign of educating people regarding firearm restraining orders. I'm going to do another live that's going to talk about the difference between clear and present danger and firearm restraining orders. I don't have a problem educating you because we need to put those, we need to put that information out there so that you understand why you may have to walk away. Be cold toward Susan Sharon Jean. You know I'm going with the names, right? You may have to walk away. What do I mean? Get into an argument. Don't try to win the argument. Walk away. Be known as an habitual walk away. -er. Why? You don't want to, it's, uh, that's a whole nother laugh. I don't want to get distracted. I would do that. I'm glad I took notes so I can stay on track because I'm so passionate about that. Follow this channel if you want me to talk about that because I'm going to talk about that, okay? But they're going to start a campaign educating people on that, okay? He talked about in the bill the recommendation for the cur circuit clerk and the state's attorneys uh, being involved in the process to educate people on the firearm restraining order process and to be uh, uh, involved in the process to help people file petitions, okay? Uh, they're talking about increasing it from six months to a year. Um, okay, and that was Brendan Kelly. Now we're talking about Sheriff Tom Dart. Sheriff Tom Dart was, like I said, he was the most influential law enforcement speaker, um, but this is what Sheriff Dart does anyway. Um, 16 years uh, in the position of Cook County Sheriff, which is usually the case. Uh, his predecessor, uh, uh, Sheehan was in for quite some time, Michael Sheehan. So, uh, 16 Sheriff Dart was his under sheriff, so heir apparent. 16 years, and he was also a prosecutor. Uh, he said it's never been this bad, never been this bad. It used to be where it was just traffic stops, stuff like that. You find a gun here and there, uh, but it's never been this bad. Now, in the 90s, crime was what it was, it was gun violence, right? No different, crack epidemic, you guys get it, but it's never been this bad. Can you all agree or disagree with that? Has it gotten worse? Sound off in the comments. If you live in Chicago, Illinois, Cook County, Illinois, has it gotten worse? I will say, having been in Chicago in all my life and having been a police officer, yeah, it's gotten bad. It's gotten bad. Oh my God, has it gotten bad? Yes, it has, right? 
Each year, it's getting uh, stronger. And then what he does is he shows extended magazines, right? He shows extended magazines. He talks about the switches, things like that. And that, you know, it, uh, he shows photos during evictions, home monitoring, talks about the violence upon our children and says strongly, people are dying. People are dying. He's not lying when he says that. Uh, and I had to notice something that Sheriff Dart did, right? Let me find this video so that you all can see this. Because in that, uh, let me see. Should be the first thing that pops up. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Uh, like I said, Sheriff Dart was the most impactful speaker. I'm not monetized. This is not even monetized, so I don't have a problem showing this tab because this is important. I want you all to be able to see this. Hey, I got your gift. I got your thing that you said, Christy. Thank you very much. And I'm going to get your books out in the mail. I appreciate that. Shouts out to the Heller Foundation. Dick Heller, for those of you all who know DC versus Heller or Heller versus DC, um, District of Columbia, uh, that landmark case, landmark case that started the ball rolling, started the ball rolling for, and made way for NRA versus Chicago, uh, uh, Ezell versus Chicago. Shouts out to Rhonda Ezell and Chicago Guns Matter. Uh, so yes, uh, Christy from the uh, Heller Foundation, thank you very much for that. Uh, I got that, I got that right on the table from the Georgia State House. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, that's one thing I love about this page is that you're able to reach people uh, you may not be able to do personally. You know, so it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I appreciate that. Just want to let you know I did get that. Um, Merry Christmas, Nadia. Thank you very much. Those of you all who are coming in, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, all that great stuff. Here we go. Let's go on ahead and pop this on the screen uh, so we can talk about it. Here we go. Let me see how it came up. Good, good, good. Y'all like the background? Y'all like the Christmas background? Tell me you like the Christmas background. Tell me you like the Christmas background, baby. Yeah. All right. Let me fix it. Here we go. Uh, 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 and, uh. Okay, good. Much better. And what's happening is people are dying, and we need to do something about it. Strong words from law enforcement leaders and parents today at a hearing on assault weapons. Lawmakers met in Chicago to take testimony on the proposed Protect Illinois Communities Act, which, among other things, would ban the sale of military-style assault weapons in Illinois. But as Dane Placco reports, gun rights groups say that ban would itself be illegal. Um, obviously, this is a very um, pressing, polarizing, passionate uh, topic. Gun control advocates and law enforcement officials taking aim at assault weapons in Illinois. To I had myself muted. I know y'all see my ball here right over there, right? So y'all know I was in the building. See, I wasn't lying. I was there. You see, she talking directly to me. All right, let's... <laughs> Let's go on ahead and continue. Here we go. Telling a special hearing at the Illinois House Judiciary Criminal Committee that the weapons of war are out of control, endangering civilians and police. And I can honestly tell you in all my years of doing this, it's never been this bad. This, th this here, folks, this is our reality. This is what happens. I could have brought boxes of this just from this year. Just from this year, I could have brought this. This is what we deal with each and every single day. The hearing focused on the proposed Protect Illinois Communities Act, a House bill that would essentially ban the sale of military assault-style rifles in Illinois, ban high-capacity magazines with more than 10 bullets, and raise the minimum age to get a firearm owner's ID card to 21. It is frankly unconscionable that as a state, we have deemed an 18 or 19-year-old responsible enough to have a FOID with parental consent, which gives them unfettered access to any weapon of their choosing, including assault weapons. But gun rights advocates testified the courts have already ruled in their favor, striking down assault weapon bans. We're not here to negotiate. I'm here to tell you that if House Bill 5855 or anything remotely like it passes, we will see you in court. This was the third public hearing on the Protect Illinois Communities Act, with two more scheduled in Springfield next month before the legislature takes up the issue. Dane Placco, Fox 32, Chicago. 
Now, let me get back to one of the points that I was talking about. There we go. Good. So I was talking about Sheriff Dart. Um, in looking at this, right, I said it. Sheriff Dart was fair. You see the two that he's pointing out and picking up, right? He's holding extended magazines. Do you see him holding up any standard magazines that are large capacity that come with the firearm? No, you do not. You don't see him holding that up. And so that's why I love trying. I'm human, okay? But I love trying to remain neutral to see it from both sides. Because sometimes you could be so much to your point where you fail to see it from the other side in what leeway they could be giving you or what they, how they may be trying to be fair. Tom Dark did not show any standard magazine that takes 17 rounds, 19 rounds, 21 rounds, 12 rounds, 15 rounds. You see what I'm saying? And so there right there is room for negotiation. Sound off in the comments. Do 30 round magazines belong on the streets? I would really love to hear from you guys. And I'm going to put up a poll on YouTube, right? I'm going to put up a poll on YouTube. Do 30 round magazines belong on the streets? No. Stop that. Sorry about that. Okay. Do 30 round magazines belong on the streets? Come on, fool. Poll. Sorry about that. Do 30 round. I'm put that put this poll up right now. Step away from your statement regarding. You said Bernard Jackson says yes. Wow. They belong on the streets. 30 round magazines belong on the streets. You said on the streets and purchasing them are two different things. Well, sign off in the poll if you're watching by YouTube. I tend to think differently. I tend to think differently. Right? I just put a poll up there. Here we go. You said, what does it matter how many rounds as long as they are law-abiding citizens? Not on the street, but home defense. Yes, one magazine may be all you can get to if your home is invaded and you need to defend yourselves. 30-round magazines. Here we go. James Speed said, yes, on the streets with law-abiding citizens. 30 round magazines belong to free individuals. Practical Ken says, not on the street. Come on, fool. Get my cut. What the fuck? All right. Not on the streets, but home defense. Yes. One magazine may be all you can get to if your home is invaded, but you need to defend yourself. Bernard Jackson says, you have people that got 100 round drums. That's what they ought to be talking about. What do you think he's holding up, Bernard? You see the picture right there. I put him in the. Picture in picture. What do you think he's holding up? He's holding up a 30 round magazine and he's holding up the drums. Right? Eric says they can't regulate the streets. Ray Ray and Nunu don't give a damn about the law anyway. That's all I'm saying. Right? Alex, Windy City Shy says our Second Amendment rights shall not be infringed. Hold that energy. When I come back with the criticism about the 2A community, because I think that there are things that can be done that we are not providing solutions for. Now, the 30 round magazines, you ask a good question. Are those aftermarket or standard? I don't I do know this. Glock makes 30 round magazines. I don't know if they make those drums. A good percentage of these extended magazines are aftermarket aftermarket right um here we go none of your business says 
what does it matter how many rounds as long as they are law-abiding citizens, right? Uh, aftermarket extended magazines would be a good addition to a bill, not all above 10. Absolutely, okay? Uh, Alex Windy City Shy says, uh, I mean, bro, if you're legally allowed to own guns, there's no reason why you can't have high capacity uh, capacity magazines. So it's not the high capacity for me that's the issue. It's the 30 round magazines and anything above that, right? Uh, here we go. No negotiations on magazine capacity. I think you said 27 round. You said, uh, thank you, Byron. You said, honestly, there's no use for them in my opinion. I agree. William Manning says there's no reason for 30 rounds. I agree. Those of you who've never carried a gun professionally, I have, right? I've been shooting since I was 14, carry a gun professionally since I was 21. So those of you who have never carried a gun professionally, you've never had to deal with having those magazines on you every day. I couldn't imagine I could not imagine trying to carry. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get more people in this room. I could not imagine carrying two, three, four, 30 round magazines. My God, I, the weight alone. Hello. The weight alone is crazy. The, the pressure on the spring, you, if you've never carried them, yeah, standard capacity and two backups, right? And I would even carry four, right? So I'm going to jump ahead of some of my comments of what people said, and I'm going to go right to Kathleen. What uh, Kathleen, Representative Kathleen Willis, what she said, as well as Representative Ford. And there was a couple of other ones right? Who was talking about, maybe we'll have to talk about what the definition of large capacity is. So here's what I would have done. Me. Okay. Sheriff Dart held up the 30 round magazines. I tell you what, granted, we're still going to go to court if this passes and we still will seek justice at the Supreme Court of the United States level, right? But let's look at the language, the language, right? Here we go. And I'm gonna get to your comments, so please keep them coming, right? You said 10 in this proposed bill. I submit to you this. The Glock 19, let's, let me challenge you guys to get to the answer. How many rounds, what is the standard magazine of a Glock 19? What is the standard capacity of a Glock 19 magazine? What's the standard capacity of a Beretta 92FS, otherwise known as the M9 that the United States military used to use? right? What's the standard capacity of a Glock 17? What's the standard capacity of a Sig Sauer P320? What's the standard capacity of a Springfield XDM? What's the standard capacity of a Canic, right? At maximum, 19 rounds. And if you look at it, 19 rounds and the magazine, except the base plate, does not protrude outside of the magazine well. Right. It does not protrude outside of the magazine well. So if you take the research and look at the commonly purchased handguns and you take at least 10 or 20 and you look at those magazine capacities that come standard, not extended, standard. 
the maximum you will find is 20. 20. Right? 20. So, can you give us 10 more and we will agree to stand up against the extended magazines? Oh, can you give us 10 more? Right? You said 10. But 10 cuts off a great percentage of the firearms that are accessible. And they can't make magazines fast enough. You would turn people into instant criminals. You just did a bill talking about the elimination of cash bail and all this other stuff. You don't want to have it where you flood the streets, not the streets, but the jails with law-abiding citizens. So, let's negotiate. <laughs> Can you give us 10 more and we make a statement against the extended magazines? Well, here we go. You said it seems reasonable, but I doubt they will go for it. We don't know what they will go for because the people who are representing the Second Amendment community are not negotiating. They are not negotiating. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand where justice is going to happen. It's not going to happen at the bill level. It's not going to happen at the local level, right, or the state level. It's going to happen at the Supreme Court level. But here's what you're not understanding. More shootings happen, they're going to try again with something else. They're going to try again with something else. They're going to try again with something else. Now, Brian Quellen, I can appreciate your statement. Thank you for being in the room. I, I, I can't disagree with you here. I can't disagree with you here. This isn't an Illinois problem. This is a Chicago problem. When the prosecutors don't enforce the laws, of course, crime is going to be bad. Chicago is creating an environment for the gun crimes in Chicago. I can't disagree with you, Brian. I cannot. You're totally correct. You're totally correct. But guess what, Brian? Can I introduce you to something here? And thank you for your comment. Let me introduce you something here. Highland Park is not Chicago. Right? Highland Park is not Chicago. Majority Stoneman Douglas happened in what? Florida. It didn't happen in Miami, right? It did not happen in places where there's a, here we go. You look at doggone, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Eric said, ain't even close, right? Let's talk facts. What happened on July 4th wasn't supposed to happen. Let's talk those facts, right? That's white suburbia. That's where the money is, right? That's where, well, we don't have to worry about the crime. We don't have to worry about bad schools. We don't have to worry about poverty. We don't have to worry about the projects. We have a, a downtown that looks like downtown USA. We actually value family up this way, right? We, we're... We are not Chicago. We are Highland Park. I know. Right? Michael Jordan's house is out there. Right? We, we don't have to worry about the... Yes, Alan said it. The town he shot up had an AR-15 ban, and that still happened. See, that's the part of this that's not being discussed. See, no, here we go. I'm going to go back to it. Brian, I'm going to read your comment again. Brian Quillen, this isn't an Illinois problem. This is a Chicago problem. When the prosecutors don't enforce the laws, of course, crime is going to be bad. Chicago is creating the environment for gun crimes. Who created a Robert Cremo? Who created a Nicholas Cruz? Who created an Adam Lanza? from Sandy Hook in Newtown, Connecticut, right? Who created, come on now, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold from Boulder, Colorado, right? Who created that? 
the United States Secret Service did a study of active shooters and active shootings. Four things make it possible. Childhood trauma, a recent trigger point, study of previous shootings that occurred, and then access to guns. The only thing that's been attacked is the access to guns. We're not doing anything to mitigate human behavior and what creates conditions for candidates for criminal behavior. Now, Stick said, sounds like a civil war is brewing. Let's talk facts. Let's talk facts. Let's talk facts. Here we go. Let's talk facts. Hopicopter said, ISP and local law enforcement didn't do their jobs in Highland Park. Here is also what I will say. Highland Park didn't do the job of securing Highland Park. See, before I go into the rest of these comments, I'm going to start with my criticism now. But I'm going to lead it to you all to tell me if you want me to start with my criticism now or if you want me to continue on with what happened in the meeting and then give you the criticism later. If you want me to give the criticism later because it fits right perfectly here, type the number one. If you want me to give the criticism now, type the number one. If you want me to continue on and criticize later, type the number two. Criticism now, number one. Criticism later, number two. I'm going to watch the comments. Y'all let me know. Y'all said one. I'm seeing some ones come across here. Stick said, please criticize. Some random guy, one. Alex, one. Dale, one. Nadia, one. James said two. James, you just came in. Here we go. Roll one. All right, so here we go. Here's the main comment that triggered me desire, deciding to want to criticize. You said ISP and local law enforcement didn't do their jobs in Highland Park. A lot of y'all in the Second Amendment community are a bunch of pussies. There, I said it. A lot of y'all in the Second Amendment community is a bunch of pussies. You all use Chicago as a punchline, but you wouldn't dare step foot in some of these neighborhoods around here to police, to patrol. You don't even police your own neighborhoods. You mind your business. The, the, the community, bro, the community, a bunch of fucking pussies. I said what I said. My page ain't monetized, so I don't give a fuck. Y'all bunch of pussies. Here we go. Even some of y'all that served in the military. See, y'all forget. In the military, it's not just you. You got a whole team. So then when you come here talking about that military talk, you forgot. You had a team with you. Now you rolling by yourself. I said what I said. I said what I said, right? Where was Highland Park and the volunteers in Highland Park who could have stood watch to watch out for strange things? Where was, some, and see, this is the problem that I have with people in the Second Amendment community. I was there in the room with Illinois gun owners together Okay, shouts out to Don, uh, John, right? I was there in the room with Corey, 761st Gun Club, and I believe he's a spokesperson for the National African American Gun Association, NAGA. I don't know why they chose that acronym. It's too closer to the N-word, but fuck it, be a NAGA, NAGA, right? The NRA, Illinois State Rifle Association, right? I was also in the room with Moms Demand Action. And before the hearing, absolutely, I agree, Stick. I agree. I got you. Say less. I agree. I got you. I'm going to show you where I was sitting at. Let me see. That's Justin Slaughter. Bam. You see that little bald head right there? I see the, uh, the young lady right here? That's where I'm at. Do you see where I'm at? Right over here. 
amongst all these red shirts. This whole side here, you could honestly say they were proponents of the bill. They were proponents of the bill. I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. They were proponents of the bill. You got doctors, physicians, right? You, you see that little chocolate drop dot ball head right there? So you know that's me, right? I'm next to all these red shirts. Let me show you where the uh, Illinois gun owners together and the other folks were in the room. Uh, do, 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 do. When Tom Dart started speaking... Right there. Good. They are over here where the windows are. Right. I don't know if you can see the pointer, but these are where those guys are. Here's Abraham Avalos. He spoke uh, on the second hearing. Right. They're over there in this area. But you see how many people it's red shirts up in that bad boy. It is enough to say fair enough to say that those who were for the bill, were in attendance. Those who were against it were the small few. So let me ask you a question. How many of you all remember when I was talking about Project Veteran Overwatch, a veteran-led community-involved initiative where we do what we need to do to mitigate the threat? Mitigate the threat, right? Mitigate the threat. How many of you all remember me talking about that? How many? Yes. Oh, my God, Michelle. Say less. Here we go. You are not lying. A lot of people like to talk shit, but don't do nothing. They don't contact their representative or show up to these things. How many of you all remember what I was talking about? Yes. Shanice, you remember. Tino remembers. Jeremy remembers. Uh, Melvin remembers. Right? The Second Amendment community. We look, the Second Amendment is my constitutional right. The right of the people for a secured free state. The right of the people of the, of the arms shall not be infringed. By God, the arms shall not be infringed. That's my constitutional right. Let me tell you one of the things that I saw about moms demand action. If you ever look at the shirt, it says moms demand action. And then the small words right there for gun sense or safety, something like that is in small capital letters because you know what they demand? Action. Action. Shouts out to you, Abraham. You did an amazing job with your speech. I saw the second part of the hearing. You did an amazing job with your speech. An amazing job with your speech. Shouts out to you. Abraham Avalos, he was in the room. He's the gentleman right there. Um, if you look at the deputy mayor in between these two, he's the gentleman right there in the nice blue suit. Outstanding job. And the thing is, the Second Amendment folks who showed up mostly dressed appropriately. One guy showed up, and I'm going to tell you something. Not Abraham. But I'm going to tell you something. There was a lady who was sitting on the front row who was a victim of that Highland Park shooting. She ran for her safety. And then to sit here and watch one of the gun supporters wearing a shirt that has an AR-15 on the back of the shirt. Do you know how triggering that could be to someone's trauma? How insensitive do you have to be to do that? How insensitive do you have to be to do that? When you want people to think from a logical position, the worst thing you can do is do stuff like that that flares up those types of triggers. Now, some of you all could say that the red shirts flare up triggers too. The color red simply means stop. Cut the cap. Cut the BS. The color red means stop. 
and the shirts say moms demand action. Do we love moms in this room? Yes, we do. Do we love demand? Yes, we do. Do we love action? Yes, we do. So where is the second, com uh, second Amendment community in advocating for volunteering our services to sit outside the schools, outside workplaces, and mitigate being there to ensure that the environment is safe. How many of you all watched the movie Gridiron Gang? If you've ever watched the movie Gridiron Gang with uh, The Rock, The Rock was in that movie, The Gridiron Gang. I wish I could play the, you know what? I want to play the clip. Let me see if I can find it. There was a point in that clip. I'm going to find that shit. I, I can't sit there and not talk about it. I got to find it. Give me one minute. Give me one minute, y'all. Great movie. You've seen it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let me find that clip. That clip is important to my point. Bear with me. Yeah, I think this might be it. Uh, ba -do 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 -do. Hold on, hold on. Now, that's the scene where he got shot. That ain't it. But that's not the... That's not the... I wish I could play it. I wish I could find it. I don't want to hold you all trying to find this. No, that's not it. Wonderful movie. Wonderful movie. Uh, I can still show the cover of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll show the cover of it. So that way you all can see what I'm talking about. But it was in this movie. All right. Gridiron Gang. It was in that movie where that you said we will wait. Well, we can't wait for that. Right. But in that movie, it was a situation where uh, this guy right here uh, was in a beef with another guy. What did this guy get shot and... These were all juvenile detainees. In these juvenile, in this juvenile situation, the school that they were uh, competing against, the school that they were competing against, didn't want to play in the final game. And one of the juvenile supervisors, who actually was kind of against what The Rock was doing, giving him all kind of problems, said, "What if we can ensure that this violence does not happen?" And what did he do? He reached out and he partnered with L.A. County sheriffs, Los Angeles police, people from Los Angeles uh, uh, County probation. And they were able to ensure that this would not happen. This is the scene right here. 8-8. 8-8 for life, homie. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, 8-8. Hey, hey. Get up off, what up, bitch? You be dead for that, nigga. Look, look, you ain't got nothing. Don't let me catch you in the street. I got this. All right, I had to stop it. I had to stop it. I can't show it. But what he did was he shot him. He shot him. And when he shot him, this was these were juvenile detainees. And this team over here, these are schools that agreed in the Catholic Christian League or something like that to play these juveniles. And what happened after that, they got so scared. Now, the police did catch up with him. Pop, pop, pop. He ran and he, and he got killed. Yeah, that's what happened, right? But do you remember, Alan, where in that, right, the guy who was so against The Rock in this program, he said, well, what if we can guarantee that this doesn't happen? What if we can guarantee that this will not happen? And he reached out and got support to ensure that those boys had that game. And that's where I'm saying the Second Amendment community is failing. You know why they keep coming after us who want to keep our guns and stuff like that? They keep coming after because the bodies keep dropping. And the thing is, let me show you all the police showed up. They surely did. And I think, didn't they lose that game? It was against Barrington. It was against Barrington. It was a high school, a Catholic high school, Barrington. 
the Mount Carmel of that area, right? And Justin Slaughter, the uh, state representative. People Hold are on a minute. dying. I'm going to show you the state representative, Justin Slaughter. He asked the question. He was like, what solutions do you have? Because we know we want you want you, you want to keep your guns, and we're not against you keeping your guns and stuff like that. Now, whether you agree with that or believe that or not, that's up to you, right? But he, this is Bob Morgan, right? Uh, Bob Morgan is the gentleman on the left, right, of uh, Senator Slaughter, right? I mean, uh, Representative Slaughter. But Se Representative Slaughter was asking for solutions. None, nothing to the effect of getting out there and volunteering in your community, right? Now, Alex said, yeah, but it's not our fault that the bodies keep dropping. We're not doing the shootings. The gangs are, how do people not understand it? I'm not going to pay a price for another person's actions. Then you don't understand politics. You don't understand politics. We all pay the price for someone's actions. Does that make sense? I know it doesn't make sense, but we all pay the price for someone's actions. We all pay the price for someone's actions. Now, yes, you can move out of Illinois and go to another state. I get it. But how many people got the funds and the, uh, the stuff to be able to do that? How many of you all got that? How many of you all got that? You don't have that. So don't lie to yourself and say that you got it because you don't. Otherwise, you'd have been left. You've, you've dropped anchor in here. You're here, right? You said, and if someone mess up, then they make a law and we all pay. Also, if you move out of Illinois or out of state, then it'll happen there. And so that's what I'm saying. What are we in the Second Amendment community willing to do to help the issue, right? I would have loved to have seen somebody step to and file a witness slip and come with solutions to say this. The act is called Protect Illinois Communities Act. It's not called the Assault Weapons Ban. Now, we know that's what it is, but that's not what it's called. It's called Protect Communities. So what are we willing to do? Hold on. You said gun safety training. I'm glad you said gun safety training. Let's get to it. Um, uh, one of the representatives asked Ed Sullivan of the Illinois State Rifle Association about gun safety training. Now, Ed Sullivan of the Illinois State uh, Rifle Association went up there and he was talking about, he gave a wonderful story. He was talking about how he, uh, you know, there was a time where he was learning about hunting and then he did something wrong. And then his father took the rifle away, unloaded the rifle and sent him back in. You know why? Because we were disciplined back in the day. Words of those, uh, we, we were taught safety training back in the day. Well, you can't do that now. And then Bob Morgan steps in and says, well, we did, you know, put that bill in there where schools are able to teach hunter safety and education. So the bill is out there, whether you all use it or not, it's out there though. We we did that. Ed Sullivan had nothing to say, probably because he was instrumental in assisting in the you know authoring of that bill. But there was a representative who asked a question of Ed Sullivan, and she said, Do you believe that people who desire to get guns? should take gun safety training. And Sullivan says, yes. But then she asked the question, so then do you believe that people who desire to get FOID cards should get training? Guess what Ed Sullivan said? Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think he said. I'll repeat the question. Do you think that persons who desire to get FOID cards should get training. What do you think he said? I'm waiting. He said no. He said no. He said no. And I'm sitting here like, what? 
I am a proponent of people getting safety training to have the FOID card. You can't get a driver's license without going through training and cars kill more people than guns. You heard what I said. You heard what I said. Now, Bullet says, Sullivan said no. Gun laws in Chicago are on the books. Start enforcing those laws. And see, it's people like Bullet as to the reason why we keep having issues. That's one of the things that sickens me about the Second Amendment community. You guys are stubborn. You want to point out the issues about negligence and safety, but then you don't talk about the recklessness that the Second Amendment has in terms of handling guns. You don't want to talk about the negligent discharges. You don't want to talk about the incidents where people almost have near misses because they do things reckless with guns. See, that's why I love my position being a trainer and being independent to where I can see it from both sides. It's not let's ban cars. See, people like Bullet, Bullet, you're not the problem, but your arguments are. Your arguments are. And that's why people who don't like guns and don't carry them keep attacking us in the Second Amendment community and our positions because we don't think logically. You want to talk about text, history, and tradition? Cool. That stuff is great. That stuff is great. The New York uh, State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case is absolutely amazing, but it's not going to stop the bodies from dropping. And I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I am going to go there. Let's go there. <laughs> Those of you who live in a community where you don't have these problems, you couldn't give a rat's ass what happens in Chicago. Now, you care about what happens nationwide to the Second Amendment, but you couldn't give a rat's ass what happens in Chicago until little Billy Turner in your town. That's right. In your town. Right? Shows up to school and wipes out half of the school. Newtown, Connecticut, right? That wasn't in the hood. Parkland, Florida isn't in the hood. Boulder, Colorado isn't in the hood. These, the majority of these active shootings occur in places where you live. See, that's the problem with the Second Amendment community. You guys love talking about gun violence in urban communities and why you need to protect yourself, but you're not even stopping white kids from practically killing other white kids. The majority of those moms demanding action, mostly white. You see what I'm saying? Y'all love to talk about black on black crime, but you don't want to talk about white on white situations that trigger actions like Illinois House Bill 5855. Too bad a black dot had to put that in your face. You don't want to talk about that. They'll prod from my cold debt. You know good and hell well if the ATF, Illinois State Police, and Chicago Police show up at your doorstep with the SWAT teams, you know good and hell well they are going to pry it from your cold dead hands. You know good and hell well they are. So cut the cap. Stop it. Don't let Charlton Histon's statement from the NRA get you permanently horizontal. Don't let your 
ignorance to why well, I got all my stuff. You can't use it all at the same time. You can't use it all at the same time. If they showed up at your doorstep nine times out of 10, you are not prepared. You are not a prepper. You don't live in the country. You live in Chicago. You take an Uber to work, Chad. Cut the shit out. You are not gangster. Because you shoot at a paper tar- you're not. you're not about that life. Cut it out. And a lot of y'all in the Second Amendment community love to talk about Chicago, but you wouldn't step foot in Chicago because you know you get your ass got. You ain't about that life. Cut it out. Brian, Brian Quillen, I'm glad you're still here, my friend. We've been we've been saying train and arm teachers or add armed guards in school, and the anti-gun people say no. Brian, I'm glad you brought that up. Brian, you about to like this shit. You about to be mad at me for this, Brian. Brian, oh, you about to be mad at me for this. Let me tell you what's going to happen, right? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Now, I'm a, I'm with you with the training armed teachers, but you know that ain't going to never happen in Illinois. You know that shit. In Texas, they got that going on, right? But here's this. Re- those of y'all who've been following me, remember... When we were talking about in Uvalde, remember the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, I believe that's him. That's him now, but I believe that was him at the time this was signed into law, right? Remember when he signed into law that teachers can carry in the schools provided they are trained and that the Uvalde Independent School District opted out, I believe that's the name of the school district, they opted out of that program. So since they opted out of that program, oh well, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to say oh well because that's incentive, but you get where I'm going, right? If the if the legislature gives you the ability to be able to defend yourself and then you opt out, you get where I'm going with that? Damn. But then it doesn't help when the door is left open either. Let me show y'all what I came across. Oh my God, I'm petty. Here we go. So Illinois is spending so much time. Y'all do me a favor. Hit that like button, please. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. All that great stuff. If you haven't already done that so far, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button because I'm going to show you something. It's troubling. I'm going to show you something. It's troubling. But it's amazing how we are spending so much time. So much. Let me see. Did I post it up? I thought I posted that shit up. Apparently, I ain't posted up. Damn, I thought I posted it up. I ain't po- Let me go to my TikTok page. All right, there we go. SBC. Damn, it ain't even showing up there. They don't like me no more. Well... Let me see. How can I get this video up here? I got to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something on here. I got to uh, send this video to myself. Hold on. one. Y'all hold on one minute because this is important. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, baby. That's right. Let's go ahead and send it to me. Let me send it to me right now. Drop it. Thank you, Dale, for the donation. I appreciate you. For those of y'all who value the content, this page isn't monetized, but if you see the links across the bottom and you would love to donate to me issuing uh, children's books that I have out to schools, $5. Appreciate it. Here we go. Thank you, Dale, for that. Um, here we go. Let me get this video across. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. You are a thousand percent correct. A gun is not a joke. Not a joke at all. Video file, video file. Let me go to downloads. It just popped through. Let me see if it comes up. Hopefully it does. It might not. It might not. I hope it did. Nope. I got to show y'all this video. And TikTok took it off. 
TikTok took. Oh, I got it on my Instagram. Hold on, y'all. I'm gonna find this video. This shit's too doggone important. Let's see. Yes. Mike said it. Bam. Good. Let's see if it comes up. It better. Bam. There we go. Well, I'm logged in. I'm logged in already. Oh, my God. Ah. Send me a security code. I can't be mad at the security measures. That stuff is important. Give me one minute, yo. Can't be mad at the security procedures. They're there for a reason. Why am I logged in? Yeah, save the info, fool. All right, perfect. Yes. So I'm going to show you all this. See, People are focused on the wrong doggone things. Here we go. Bam. Now I don't know how large this is going to be. I'm going to try to blow it up. Move your comment for a minute. Here we go. While people are busy focusing on uh, guns and things like that and the gun ban, how do we have a Chicago public school that the door is still left open? That the door is still left open. How do we have that? What good is an assault weapons ban or protecting Illinois communities when Chicago public schools doors are still left open? Here we go. Matter of fact, let me blow this up a little bit. Now, because it's not going to work. For some reason, I want to hide the comments. Nope. No, it's not going to work. All right, here we go. See, a delivery truck just left. You see this? You see this right here? A delivery truck just left, Project Veteran Overwatch. Luckily, I'm a good person, right? But this right here is how active shootings occur. This is supposed to be a secure school. Not going to say what the name is, but this is supposed to be a secure school. You see that right there? If I'm lying, I'm dying, I'm frying. See that little prop right there? That right there. You do know that in Robb Elementary in Texas, he gained access to a door that was open. Now that delivery truck left. Now I'm not going to turn this camera and I'm not going to show it. And the reason why I'm not going to show it is because y'all not going to know what school this is. Right now, I'm going to make sure this door is closed. Where is the security? Where is the security? How long is this door going to stay propped open? I'm going to stand here for a minute and just see just how long this door gonna stay propped. Y'all y'all hang hang with me, hang with me, we gonna see. All you see is the red door and this is a school. Matter of fact, let me see if I could do a little work so that y'all see the top of the building that simply say school, school. Come on now, how long this door gonna stay open? Let's go. I'm going to do them a favor. I'm going to kick this out the way. This thing shouldn't even be open. The rest is history. You already know. What are your thoughts about what you just saw? What are your thoughts about what you just saw? Y'all sound off. What are your thoughts about what you just saw? How do you stick? How was I able to just get up in that school? I'm not going to say what school's name. It was a Chicago public school. I'm not going to say what the name of the school is. That's not important. But how was I just able to just walk up in that school? Come on now. It's like the memory of what happened in Uvalde. It, it just escaped some schools or some teachers just like that. In Illinois, they're talking about banning assault weapons and they're not saying anything about protecting the schools. 
What good is an assault weapons ban if your school is left wide open? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Yes, that was during school hours right there. And like, what time was it when I got the eight? About around 8.45. 8.45. They were not on winter break. They were not on winter break. During school hours, kids were there. Kids were there. During school hours, I kid you not, during school hours, how was I able to get up in there? That should not have been the case. That should not have been the case. Luckily, I'm a security professional, former cop, got their best interests in heart, in mind. How was that able to happen? Complacency. Complacency. Complacency, just straight up complacency. Let's call it exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. That should not have been able to happen. That should not have been able to happen. That's absolute outright complacency. Absolute outright complacency. Absolute outright complacency. And I'm going to show it again. Not the whole video, but keep it right there. Absolute outright complacency. What is the purpose of an assault weapons ban if your school doors are left wide open? And Chicago public school doors are some of the toughest doors. They're, they're tough. But what's the purpose of it if you just go? And the thing is, the school that this neighborhood is in, it can't happen here. It doesn't happen here. We don't have those problems up here. Oh, that's a that's a south side problem. That's a south side problem. That's a problem that's not us up here we got community up here we got neighbors up here we value family up here we have community up here we're not you guys okay neither was Uvalde neither was Columbine Neither was Sandy Hook. Need I go more? Neither was Majority Stoneman Douglas. You see what I'm saying? This is crazy. This is crazy. And when you have that mindset, Right. I don't know how many of you all watched the movie Pearl Harbor, right? The movie Pearl Harbor. Remember when they, when they were talking about, well, we don't have to worry about sabotage from the Japanese. We're in the harbor. I'm going to get to the rest of this stuff. <laughs> we're in the harbor. We don't have to worry about sabotage. The harbor is shallow. Torpedoes have to dive it isn't what you're alleging. Well, I know. I know. I know what you're talking about, right? I'm, not, I'm talking about the mindset. I'm not talking about the reality, right? I'm talking about the mindset, not the reality. Remember, they said the torpedoes have to go to a certain depth in order for them to be able to arm. We don't have to worry about that. The harbor is shallow. Then what happened? Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? 
You love to say what things can't happen, but then it happens. Kevin Thomas, you said, what is the what was the House Bill 5855 results? Absolutely, Alan. Come on now. Until they made torpedo. Well, they didn't make the torpedoes, but I know what you mean, though. When they put the wood fins on the end of it. Just simple ingenuity. Just simple ingenuity. Put the put the fins on it and then it, and then come at an angle where the torpedoes don't have to do a deep dive. They just coast right on in at an angle. They made the fins. They made the fins. Simple stuff. And they outfitted all their torpedoes with it and had dive bombers, high-level dive bombers that were able to. And here we go. Oh, it's a large bleep. It's, it's really big. Oh, hold on. Hold on there, Tim. Oh, that's just a flight of B-17s coming from the mainland. Okay. Nadia said, if I'm lying, I'm dying, I'm fried. That's what I say, right? American arrogance. American arrogance. And it's like you all rest in the blanket of the freedom that is provided by those who are willing to exact violence to keep you safe. But you're not willing to do it yourself. You're not willing to stand out there and protect your community. You're not willing to stand out there. And here we go. Matter of fact, let me give you a solution. Because time, I'm watching. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Two hours is where I tend to cap the live at. Right? And we had an hour and 36 minutes. To answer your question, Kevin, it hasn't been signed into law yet. They haven't even voted on it yet. So there's two more hearings in Springfield. And then when the new General Assembly is in place, they will likely begin to vote on it. Okay, so that's answering your question. All right. But when you look at it, when you begin to look at it, here's what I would suggest is a solution. Project Veteran Overwatch. Project Veteran Overwatch. Veteran-led community-involved initiative of people who are out there willing to watch the schools. Here's what I would suggest they would amend. Section 24 of the Illinois Criminal Code and the Illinois School Code that allows persons who have been trained and background checked to be able to be within a thousand feet of the school, but not on school property, but on the corners for the limited purpose. One, you got to check in with the school. OK, and I'm talking about check in by way of telephone. By way of telephone, right, or some other kind of secure communication, some other kind of means, right, so that you got face on face, you're, you're you got credentials, you've been trained and you are outside in an armed capacity watching the two-dimensional corners of the schools. And you are working in concert with the police department and the security staff on site, checking doors, mitigating threats, denying entry of those persons who are doing things that are rather overtly suspicious. Let me ask you this question. For those of you all, you said they had that at a truck stop down there in Bloomington. Out freaking standing. Outstanding. Outstanding. And I'll give you an example of what I was talking about. I'm going to go back to my TikTok page and I'm going to show you a video that was on my TikTok page that went viral. It was the video of the veteran Overwatch. Okay. And this was in Chicago. This was in Chicago. It's called. Yeah. Now, due to the graphic nature of what you're about to hear, listener discretion is advised. 
But yes, it's gonna have so it's gonna be some choice words. But here we go. It's called Veteran Overwatch. So this is what I did. I picked random schools. I'm clearly identified. Ready, able, prepared. And the school I was going to go to, I just happened to drive past one school and I see our babies outside playing on recess. Right there. And I'm not anywhere and else. I'm providing problem. Overwatch. Yep. See, there are a lot of veterans who are saying, put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. Do you know how much it costs me to do this? <sighs> Nothing. And I don't need permission from the Chicago police. I don't need I'm licensed to care. Let's see, let's take a look. Oh shit! Sorry, went too far. Those babies being ah. Let's see. Carrie, I'm definitely trained and certified, and our babies matter. And I'm providing Overwatch. Now, just imagine if I had other people who were willing to donate their time to sit and provide overwatch for our babies. Y'all talk about, we need more police in school. We need more security. We need more this. We need more that. No, there's free shit that we can do. Free shit. I don't need no one's permission, but my own time to sit out here and watch them play and watch for any threats that may be coming up. Free shit. Veteran Overwatch. Veteran Overwatch. I don't give a fuck if I don't get the credit. Get your ass out there and do it. Our babies matter. They matter. Let's go. Don't hit that shit. Let's see. Let's take a look. Those babies being dropped off. Look at the babies. And this was at another school. Off. And it is amazing. Look at the babies being dropped off. I don't want to zoom in for their protection. But look at the babies. Being I'm just saying. Right? It's nothing to sit here and provide solutions that could make the community feel safe and be willing to get out there and mitigate it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm tired of here in the Second Amendment community to talk about protection of a constitutional right in guns. Don't get me wrong, that stuff does matter. But that's not stepping out there and leading from the front. Does that make sense? Am I doing too much by... Y'all criticize me. Criticize me and chastise me. Is that asking too much? Sound off in the comments. I'll listen. I promise I'll listen. I submit. Sound off in the comments. Am I asking too much? And I'm not asking you all from downstate and central Illinois to come up to Chicago and patrol. No, I'm asking you to do this in your own community. I, you see what I'm saying? How easy would it be for the Second Amendment advocacy groups to come to the table and still talk about, we're going to take you to court, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, New York State, Pistol Rifle Association versus Bruin and the Heller decision and NRA versus Chicago. You could still say those things, but then we could sit there and say, okay, we do have some solutions. We are looking for you to amend section 24 of the Illinois Criminal Code to allow for persons in Project Veteran Overwatch to provide exterior Overwatch. What does Overwatch mean? In the military, we are providing Overwatch for the exterior perimeter of the school, right? It's on a volunteer basis. Members have to be state and FBI background checked. You do have to go through training. And I will tell you this. 
I will provide free 20 hour unarmed and even 20 hour armed security training. I will provide the training for free. Did you hear what I said? I will put the only thing members have to do is pay the range fee and pay for the ammo. But I will provide the training for free. You know what I said? I am an Illinois state licensed security trainer. I will provide the 40 hour private security armed training for free. The only thing members have to pay for is their perk card and their background check. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm talking about providing the training for free, and the only thing you have to pay for is your perk card, your background check, and the ammunition and the range fee, but I'm providing the training for free. If you all amend Section 24 of the Illinois Criminal Code that allows Project Veteran Overwatch members who are background checked, trained, licensed. We are not entering the school property. Not entering the school property. We are only providing exterior overwatch. We are not breaking up fights. We will have radio comms with the interior school so that if we see it, we can report it. We are not out there like Project Safe Passage, right? We're not out there overt where it's clear that we're there. We're covert. We're undercover. And we don't activate until we see something that's worthy of activating. What do I mean? How many of you all remember the Majority Stoneman Douglas situation where Nick Cruz on approach project didn't he have a long gun let me check hold on let me see Yeah, I was trying to see if they had the videos of him on approach to the high school. I'm saying, just give me a minute. I'm trying to find the uh, the bag. I think he approached uh, with the long gun when he was on approach to the school. Yeah, I can't find that uh, particular picture. But if you saw somebody on approach, yes, but this is volunteer. You said as a job, yes, but this is volunteer. See, that's the problem. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. And that's why I said a lot of y'all would, a lot of y'all want to get, y'all want to get paid, man. And I'm just, y'all do understand that moms demanding action, they're doing that stuff for free, right? Y'all do understand that people who are spearheading the, the, the lobbying efforts, we're not talking about lobbyists. I'm sure they get paid. But I'm talking about these victim advocates. There are a lot of them who are volunteer. Right? These people testifying for the bill who are invoking the hearts and minds of the state representatives who will vote on this thing. They're doing that for free. But we in the second community, second amendment community, always want to be paid. 
Y'all always want to be paid for some shit. Well, that's what I'm proposing. No, I know what he's saying. What you're asking and what he's saying are two different comments. You said, he said as a job, yes, but this is, okay, maybe I'm not saying, I'm sorry. I could be wrong. You're probably right. I don't know. I'm, I'm not reading all the comments. So you're looking at the flow of it. You're fine. You're fine. I saw Chris. That's why I backed off. You're right. Yeah, you're right. But for those who are talking about doing it for pay, <laughs> not you, Chris, my bad. I'm sorry. But for those who are talking about doing it, yes, victim advocates are doing it for free for eight hours a day. Yes. That's what I'm saying. For those of you all who are talking about doing it for free. Now, there's another argument to this where people are talking about where you got veterans who don't have a damn job. And they can be out here. You know, I got to put my country voice on. And they can be out here by God serving and protected. Let me tell you how that's going to work. If you put them inside the schools, that'll be the safest school for about a week. Have you ever been, those of y'all who were in the military before, and those of y'all who's been forward deployed or even been in the field, what do veterans do? What do veterans do when they get bored? Not veterans, I'm sorry. What do military members do when they get bored? Come on, y'all. Sound off. What do they do when they get bored? Don't they do some of the most reckless, silliest stuff? Oh, my Lord. They'll be trying to fuck the teachers. You'll be sitting here. Hold on, guys. Hold on for a minute. Now, listen. Man, I've been by God. I've been waiting for the longest time. I swear to God, I wish somebody would come on up in here. I wish somebody would. Come. Hold on for a minute. Let me tell y'all. I wish somebody would come on up in here by God and try to do it. You're going you're gonna to find yourself in a whole bunch of by God trouble. You're going to find yourself. Hold on for a minute. Let me see. Look. Hey. Why is your ass in the goddamn hallway? Don't you make don't you make me bring you to the principal's office. You get your bad guy ass in that goddamn school. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with you. Don't you don't you make me. You bear you boy. I'm not your god, I'm not your mama, and I'm not your daddy. Why I beat you? You better get your ass in the goddamn front lean and rest position right now. Hold on for it. And now you got all kind of spit stuff around the school. Look, the veterans would be bored. Why would you want to expose the interior school community to veterans? Why, why would you want to do that? That's why I said outside would be a safer place for the veterans to be. Because you want to deny them entry. Deny them entry. Deny them entry. Eric Harris, Dylan Klebo came from the outside in. Nicholas Cruz, outside in. Adam Lanza, outside in. Uvalde, outside in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, if they're in the school, well, it might be too late. But you can still you can still respond. You know what I'm saying? There would be a key. Project Veteran Overwatch members would have keys. You not all the members, but at least one of the members would have a key. You'd be able to get at, yes, you'd have to, because we're QRF. We're there faster than the police. And if we got comms with the security on the inside, we're coming in. But here's this: here's where Project Veteran Overwatch members would do a great service. Go around, check doors. Hey, exterior one to interior one, make sure the doors are closed. Make sure the doors are locked. Sometimes they got to be reminded. Why do I say this? What you don't know is I've worked school security. I've done a lot. 
in my career, I've done a lot and I got the receipts and people to prove it. Sometimes security be used as gophers. What does that mean? What does that mean? Go sit in this classroom. Go sit here. Go do this. Go grab coffee. Go run to the board and grab this. Go grab that. Go do this. Go do that. They be used as gophers. And the security don't mind. Let me tell you why the security don't mind. Because the more you have me doing certain stuff, right? The more you have me doing certain stuff, it justifies me having a use than just sitting around. Because if all you see me doing is sitting around, then you begin to wonder from an administrative perspective, what am I doing spending money on you just sitting around? Now, CK Ultra says, from a military perspective, having faced multiple confrontations that has uh, then one has rounds, selective targeting is required. Yet the enemy doesn't know or didn't know how many rounds I had. I get what you're saying. <laughs> right? I get what you're saying. But that's what I'm saying. What type of solutions are members from the 2A community pushing to the forefront to give rise to moms demanding action and other groups saying, hey, we can't say nothing to them. We may not like the guns, but at least these guys are not just sitting around not proposing solutions. And see, sometimes the solutions that members from the 2A community propose have not taken into consideration anything about if it would work in the long term in the schools. You don't understand about the budgets. You don't understand about the finances. You don't understand about things that go on. Look, it's the government. They got money. If you can send 80000 to Ukraine or however much money to Ukraine, you got the money to be able to support, and here we are. Shit still ain't being done. What can we do in the 2A community right now to lead from the front? What can you do right now? Y'all swear up and down, 22 a day. So I'm going to do 22 push-ups a day. You're not being paid to do those 22 push-ups. DFAS, Defense Finance Accounting Service. DFAS, you're not getting an LES. You're not getting any military money. You're not getting anything to do those 22 push-ups. You're not getting anything to advocate for veterans. You're not. You're doing that stuff because you care. So what are we doing to step out and lead from the front to mitigate the problem, to deny the active shooter's entry? What are we doing for free? What are the free things that we could do right now, right? Now you have an opportunity in Illinois to file a witness slip for the two hearings that are about to occur, you have an opportunity to lead from the front and come up with solutions that we can do that will work. You have an opportunity. You can sit there and say, well, here's the section 24 of the only criminal code that says that we can't come within a thousand feet of the school. Here's what I propose. Just like you have emergency services, disaster agency workers who went or what they call cert workers, right? What do they do? Whenever there's a community emergency, it's the community emergency response team, cert, or ESDA, emergency services disaster agency. Cert and ESDA are volunteers. It's written into state law. You can literally put Project Veteran Overwatch, a veteran led community involved initiative into state law where they got to be FBI and state background checked. They're volunteers. So they're not getting paid. They're credentialed. They're trained. They're armed. They got communication with the school. The school knows the members names, right? And you're providing exterior security, checking the doors, pushing the doors. You're trained quarterly, quarterly. Quarterly, quarterly, you remember what I said? Quarterly on how to identify active threats, recent security trends, recent things that these are bags and these are things, what a person is like, places where they could possibly enter. Come on now. 
There's ways for you to do it. What are we doing here? What are we doing? You want to have your guns protected, but you don't want to mitigate the threat because you're scared. Last point, and then I'm going to end the live. Well, I'll drop the link if you all want to come up. And then after that, I'll end the live if nobody comes up. Alan, appreciate you. Love you too, brother. Thank you for your commentary. <laughs> right. Um, the advocacy from the NRA and the other two A groups, horrible. Horrible. In these hearings, you heard from victims of crimes, right? You heard from victims of crimes. Here's an idea, and I don't mind sharing it. If you're all here and you just came in, hit the like button, subscribe button, all that great stuff. You know how they got crime chasers who go around and, you know, chase after Chicago crimes or crimes in the Oh, it's definitely passing JFB for sure. It's definitely passing. But do you know how they have, uh, like if there's a disaster, you know, the Salvation Army and the Red Cross have those types of workers who go out to these events and actually, you know, provide disaster assistance and stuff like that. Why doesn't the NRA and the USCCA or even NAGA, whatever, or even the Illinois State Rifle Association, why don't they have on the ground persons who can respond to some of these situations? Well, what does that mean? Some of these people have no one to advocate for them, right? So just imagine if, hey, my name is Mike Brown. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry to hear uh, what happened. And I represent the... Enter your 2A organization here. You know, we got some warm blankets for you. We got a warming center, you know, right around, you know, in this area for you. You know, we want to provide you some stuff for you to be able to defend yourself because we don't, violence in Chicago is just a travesty. And we want to make sure that you're able to help yourself. You know, the police, they're, they're out here, but they're not out here to protect you. You know, and I, and I hate to say that, you know, whatever, but they're not out here to protect you. Warren versus District of Columbia, this and this and that. It's your job to protect you. And we really care about you being able to protect yourself. And we got a voucher for a free concealed carry class. And provided that you have a clean background, we also have a voucher so that we can go ahead and help you process your application so that you can be on the road to helping you protect yourself. Would that be too much trouble? Now, guess what you did in that moment? In that moment of despair, you helped uplift that person to a point where they feel like they're able to protect themselves. You have empowered them. And you know what you've done in empowering them? They will likely come through for you in moments like this. Hey, my name is Mike. You remember that time where we came out? And how's your family doing, by the way? How are you feeling? Are you taking advantage of that training? I know. We've been keeping tabs. We've been keeping tabs, yo. We know you've been taking advantage of that training. Man. Right now, they're getting ready to pass a bill. They're getting ready to pass a bill um, that would take, remember, you we took you to the gun store and helped you select, you know, the type of guns that work for you, not for us, but for you. You know, we put you through that extra training. Well, right now, they have a bill. And that bill seeks to take away the guns that you uh, just bought the training that you received, the magazine capacity. Yeah, I remember you were telling me your story about how you were a victim of domestic violence. I remember you telling me that. 
I remember you telling me that you went and got an order of protection. I remember you telling me that you got an order of protection. And in that order of protection, I remember you telling me that the order of protection didn't help you. That he still kicked in the door. That she still put her hands on you. That they still came in and jumped you. And I remember you telling me that since then, they tried to do it again, but you had your gun on you and you were able to back them off and you were able to move to a different location. And we even got you some, you know, counseling and stuff like that and some education so you could learn some things about you. You know, well, would it be too much trouble if you talked about some of the things that we did to help you? Would that be too much trouble? Watch, she would be filing the witness slip. She'll be right there testifying. Why does that matter? Because you have to understand the politics in Illinois. See, some of you are, are so, some of you all are so Republican, you're not Democrat. Does that make sense? Some of you all are so Republican, you're not Democrat. Some of you are so 2A, you don't think like somebody who's not. Why do I say you need to have females out there in these hearings advocating for this right? Because they are the ones who have been out there alone. They are the ones who are taking the concealed carry classes because they called the police and the police didn't come fast. They called the police, but it didn't stop their baby daddy from kicking in the door and they needed to have something right then and there to stop their baby daddy from trying to beat him up. How many persons has this concealed carry legislation and the getting the training and getting the firearm and feeling empowered to be able to not be a victim of a crime. How many women has this helped? See, it doesn't help when the 2A community is sexist. It doesn't help when the 2A community is, I don't know if it's misogyny or misandry, whichever one, I don't know. But it doesn't help when they don't reach out to the women they capitalized on. It doesn't help when you don't care. And so you missed out on an opportunity to have women be the face of the opponents of these bills. You missed out on that. You put them through training. You got the money. You didn't care. You had no follow through. You had no follow through. <clears throat> you came up in class and you got the money so they could get the insurance and there's no follow through. They're getting all those magazines, but there's no follow through. Even fire departments Absolutely. You get it. Even fire departments go out into the community and provide education and training and free smoke detectors. But the NRA has no follow through. USCCA has no follow through. Illinois State Rifle Association has no follow through. You love to capitalize on black, but you're not on the ground, boots on the ground during these situations to help the black, to help the white. Where were you all in Highland Park? Nowhere to be found. And I get it. 
Mike, are you suggesting that the NRA should have been boots on the ground to provide assistance and support for those people who are victims of crimes? When you are running from gunfire, you don't care who's out there. You just want people to save you. NRA has millions of dollars. And you couldn't provide a trauma outreach, not just for black, but for white. USCCA wants to be on par with the NRA. You love coming in white and black classrooms to take the money, but you're not out there boots on the ground during these traumatic incidents. You can do that to change how you reach people. There's no grassroots efforts. Those would have been the people who would have been glad to testify and say how you help them in their time of need. Why is it important to have women, and especially black women, in Illinois to be the face of this proposal against the bill and the solutions? Because black women have political capital to Illinois Democrats. White women have political capital to Illinois Democrats. Why? They vote more. They file heads of household more. They use government resources more. They call the police more. They go to family and criminal court more. Need I say more? No follow through. Your advocacy is weak. You don't understand the cards and what's on the table. Well, we don't need to. We'll get justice at the Supreme Court. What happens when Clarence Thomas dies? Didn't Justice Antonin Scalia die just like that? Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Justice An Antonin Scalia die just like that? Who expected him to die? Who expected him to die? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you kind of knew it was coming. What if Clarence Thomas dies just like that? Well, we still have a fuck. But we also have a Democratic president too. So now it's going to change from 6-3 to 5-4. A smart enemy attacks you where you think you're safe. Chris said it. Here we go. Gun groups just want money to fight unconstitutional laws in court. They need more boots on the ground. You all don't have boots on the ground. The grassroots efforts. That room should have been filled with more than just red shirts. That room should have been filled with people dressed in suits and ties or dresses with whatever. And I'm, there's another thing I'm going to say too. There's another thing I'm going to say too. Hold on one minute. You cannot be up in there antagonizing people who support mobs demand action. There was a man in there, a white man. I will not say his name. I know his name and his YouTube channel and his base. He was pointing his finger at mobs demand action, talking about their side. Their side, their side. Do you know in Chicago, in Illinois, yeah. that will get you put on a clear and present danger list? Do you know that will get you put on a list?
that will get you put on a list. You cannot go in there advocating for your position, but trying to antagonize them. That doesn't make us look good. That makes us look aggressive. You should be able to argue your point, but not antagonize them. And he was saying on his channel, he wasn't going to be confrontational too. So you know who I'm talking about. When you now put yourself in the shoes of a Democratic representative. How much political capital do you see in that room? Let me blow it up so you can see it. How much political capital do you see in that room? Do you see more support in that room for the bill or against the bill? When you look at this picture, that shows more support for it. For it. For it. Damn near everybody in that room. The whole room is for it. So if I am, and this camera was right where the representatives were, if I am a state representative, what am I to say? What am I to say? There's more support for it. Where do you see USCCA in the room? Where do you see the, the persons who are against the bill, who are proponents of people wanting to protect the communities, wanting to protect themselves? Where do you see that? You don't see that in this room. You people won't show up to protect your community. You people won't show up to advocate for your position. So why should we give you anything? Well, because the Constitution gives it to us. Jesus Christ. Anything but to admit your position is weak. Anything but to admit your position is weak. Anything but to admit that your position is weak. Well, we don't have to have a strong position. We have New York State Rifle Pistol Association versus Bruin. And how long has Roe versus Wade been the law of the land until it was just overturned? How long has Roe versus Wade been the law of the land until it was just overturned? You think Supreme Court decisions are forever? You think Supreme Court decisions are forever? You must not study the Supreme Court. You must not study the Supreme Court. Nothing is forever. You think these positions can't change? The NRA was about to go bankrupt. The NRA was about to go bankrupt. And if the NRA is no more, well, we have gun owners of America. Sure, yes, we do. Shouts out to gun owners of America. But where are the legend? Where are the efforts of those who are boots on the ground? Where are the efforts of those who are boots on the ground? <clears throat> Guess who showed up? Come on now. Guess who showed up? 
Let me get that. Hold on. Let me get that. Come on. Let me get that. Come on. Let me get that. Oh, ho. Tom Dart showed up. Chief of Constitutional Policing, Navales, on behalf of Superintendent Brown, showed up. Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Gottlieb, showed up for the city of Chicago. Moms Demand Action showed up. This lady here in the pink, <coughs> she's city council. They showed up. The extended magazines showed up. The state representatives showed up. The doctors and the physicians showed up in their lab coats, both residents and surgeons. They showed up. Illinois State Police showed up. NRA showed up. Jesse Jackson ain't show up. Shut up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> hey, that's not the point, bro. Chris said moms demand action probably have no jobs or work part time. But guess what? How many dads work overnight and were at home sleep? You couldn't have showed up. But you won't pry it from my cold dead hands. Can I say something? If it was pussy, you would show up. Oh, my God. If it was the sideways taco, you would show up. <clears throat> you show up to pole cats. You show up to other stuff. Come on now. Don't do me. Don't do me. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. If it was something you really wanted, you'd have called off and blamed that shit on COVID. You would have blamed it on COVID. You'd have found other reasons not to go to work, just to go do something you thought was valuable. Come on now. You could You had people who were witnessing, testifying by way of Zoom. State police director wasn't in the room physically. He was communicating through Zoom. There was a screen with the projector, the director was in the room, though not physically in the room. The Illinois Coalition of Domestic Violence, they testified through Zoom. The Newtown lady, she testified through Zoom. One of the victims of Parkland, one of the kids who hid underneath the body of one of the dead students, she was in the room by way of Zoom. Y'all stop coming up with a bunch of damn excuses. If it was pussy, you'd be in line to fuck it in person. Jack it off via FaceTime and Zoom. Cut the bullshit. Don't tell me it can't be done. Don't tell me it can't be done. <laughs> James said twice. <laughs> don't tell me it can't be done it can be done <laughs> twice <laughs> twice yes there was an option for zoom for regular people yes all you gotta do is reach out and ask come on man I'm just saying right Matter of fact, I'll give you one person in Illinois who testified via Zoom. Molly B., if you are on the IllinoisCarry.com website, 
IllinoisCarry.com website, you know who Molly B is. Verlinda Rowe. That's her name. Molly B. Verlinda Rowe. She wasn't in the room, but she was testifying via Zoom. She wasn't in the room, but she was testifying via Zoom. The National Shooting Sports Foundation, he testified via Zoom. Come on, man. Where are you all with the solutions? Where are you all with the boots on the ground work? Y'all weak. That's why they win all the time. Grassroots, real victims, people who talk, who are able to invoke the heartstrings, the hearts and minds of the deciders. When you look at this room, this room says, support this bill. This room does not say, uh-oh, we gonna be in trouble. Then when you got Mr. Vandermeer, who's saying, we will see you in court, the audience was damn near laughing. Just imagine being outnumbered. The one white guy who was sitting there around me, who was antagonizing one of the mom's demand action ladies, He sits there and talking about some, well, we got the, we got the seven, seven million numbers. We got the seven million numbers. I'm like, you don't have that in this room. What the fuck does that mean? You don't have that in this. You don't have that in this room. <laughs> now, Kevin says no support for Illinois, but let this type of bill hit another state where the NRA are heavy and they will come out strong. But that's what I'm saying, Kevin. Now I'm about to come down USCCA lane. USCCA is responsible for making everybody and their mama an instructor. If you can breathe and you got $600 approximately, you too can be a concealed carry instructor. Why? So we can get inside of that classroom and get more people to get our insurance product. That may work when you need it. Where are all those instructors? Why don't you have those instructors and those people who attended the classes come forward and testify? Why don't you have people who live in Illinois who are affected by the Illinois crime situation come out and testify against this bill because it would be detrimental to your ability to protect yourself? Yes, you got victims on your side who are for this bill. We got victims on this side who are against the bill. Now you got victim versus victim. Which victim do we believe? The one who got her ass beat, who decided to protect herself, or the one who got her ass shot and killed or whatever the case may be. And so I am here advocating for this part. They're literally equal, 50-50. One survived, one didn't. One is trying not to be in this position. You're not even giving them anything to balance. There's no balancing act. It's just you white men saying you want your guns versus the people who got bodies they don't want to drop anymore. You'll never win that. You'll never win that. And instead of trying to have a ground advocacy team to build up your base, you don't give a fuck. Because it's not my problem. I don't live in that area. But you come here and take the black money. But you don't understand how black advocacy in that room might have made them see things different. Why? Because you got black voters looking at the people they put in office. And I want you to tell me to my face, Representative Slaughter, Representative Ford, 
Representative Evans, Representative this, Representative that, Representative Willis. I want you. I You're my representative. I want you to tell me that my family's life doesn't matter. I want you to tell me this so that I know not to vote for you. That sends a different tune than just having a bunch of people in here who support the politics, but I'm not voting for you because you're not even my representative. It sends a different tune. It sends a different tune. So NRA, USCCA, and even NAGA, I don't know how much this is going to work for y'all because y'all down there in the southern part of the United States. Y'all should change your name. You should change your name from NAGA to RAGA, Regional African American Gun Association, because you don't represent national issues. If you look at the places where black people are, Chicago is a heavy concentration of black folk. African Americans, as you so eloquently term it, and you are nowhere to be found to represent African American issues on guns where it matters. You're weak. You are no different than USCCA. You're weak. You are absolutely weak. And I could not ever, in good conscience, recommend anybody black in Illinois join NAGA because. What am I paying a membership fee for when you're not even up here speaking and representing the issues? So let's just say all the black folks was at work and couldn't come. Why don't we have a sea of naggers? I can't believe y'all still got that as an acronym. So I could say it right and it'd be good. It's the N word that it's safe to say. We can have a whole bunch of naggers in the room. We can have the director of the naggers. I forgot his name. Smith or something like that. The bald guy with glasses. You can have him testify. We naggers are upset. <laughs> We're some mad naggers. We naggers are not having this anymore. Listen, nagga. We're tired of it. You can use all the... You could can, you can be the representatives for African Americans who are gun owners who are associated nationally. Naga. But you're nowhere to be found. So you should change your name to Raga because you really only represent the black folks in the South where you really don't have these issues because they support guns already. NRA, you need to get some boots on the ground advocacy. You use people like Colian Noir and other black folks. Fair enough, JFB. Gun ranges should close the days of the hearing. Don't you bring your ass up and shoot. Take your ass to that hearing. We'll provide bus transportation. We'll provide bus transportation. All that money y'all made during the pandemic and you can't bus people to the hearing? Well, it's during the time I got to work. Call off and blame it on COVID. Let's go. We got shit to do. Moms Demand Action does. Every town does. You guys are weak. You are weak. You are weak. You are weak. And I, you see that little black dot right there behind that white man right there? That's that little black dot right there. How many other black dots you see in the room? That's a damn shame that you, that you could easily point me out. It's a goddamn shame. You see that little black dot right there? You ain't even got to zoom in. You know this is my ass. <laughs> and then here goes Corey from the 761st Gun Club, and he's associated with NAGA. That's the only other NAGA in the room. That's the only other NAGA in the room. <laughs> Damn it. That's bullshit. There's only other NAGA in the room. The rest of them. White, 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 dot, white, 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 Hispanic, white, 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 white. She might be borderline Hispanic. Abraham is Hispanic. White, 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 white. Unsure. 
White, 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 white. Maybe. White, 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 white. Definitely white. White, 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 white coats, white. You see what I'm saying? I don't know, Nathan. I can't answer that question. I don't live in them countries. I don't live in the countries. That's a whole other topic of discussion, Nathan. I would love to have that discussion. I'm just saying, it's, it's crazy. USCCA, you need to have yourself out there boots on the ground too. Right? I'm calling you all out. I am calling you out. Illinois State Rifle Association. You know, Inglewood is in Illinois too. You know, Austin is in Illinois too. Yeah, right. You don't want to talk about that. Why do countries that have guns illegal have extremely low gun fatalities? Because they get bombed, because terrorist attacks, because knife fatalities. We don't know about their equivalent to the uniform crime reports. I don't have access to that. But if we had access to that, I'm sure they have crimes that are committed to. You see what I'm saying? Like, let's worry about the shit in our country. That'd be the funniest thing. Well, why don't we have... Boy, if Russia was launching a bomb right now over to the United States, you wouldn't be talking about no other country but where you live. Focus on where you live and not other countries. Because we're not there. In the United States, the freedom that you provide is provided by the people who are willing to start shit with other countries to keep this place secure. Because America is good at making enemies, terrorists, criminals, and a whole bunch of other things too. So let's focus on that. You think it's a better way of life? You must live there. Moving on. Abraham Avalos, the whole pro-gun organizations need to learn how the anti-gun organizations are structured and operate. Yes. 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 Oh, you live in Pennsylvania? All right, Nathan. I appreciate your comments, though. I'm not I'm not anti you. I just, you get what I'm saying? I, I'm not anti you. So thank you for being here. Yes, Abraham. That's my whole thing. And it was very nice to meet you, too, by the way. I had a chance to listen to your statement, and your statement was well put together. You were well dressed, you know, and you are you a lawyer? Are you a lawyer, Abraham? Because, yeah, I'm just saying, just the way you put it together, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Well thought out. You're not a lawyer. <laughs> well, you should be. I'm just saying, you came ready. You like how I would. You know what I'm saying? You came ready. And that's how it's supposed to be. Right? You didn't come up there. <laughs> Shouts out to Tom Van Vandermeer. You didn't come out there. <laughs> we are not... <laughs> You said, I'm con con confusing you with someone else? Well, maybe I am. I'm sorry. I don't know. Right? Here we go. You're not like Todd. Todd was like, we are not negotiating. I am telling you this, that if any of these bills are passing, we are going to see you in court. Now, that part was good. But here's another thing that he said that wasn't better. We are on the cusp of civil disobedience. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? We are in the wake of the riots. We are literally in ground zero where... Chicago downtown is damn near a barren wasteland because a lot of the businesses pulled out because of the Black Lives Matter and other riots that occurred. Why would you even mention civil disobedience? Knowing damn well, you boys from Central. Oh, that's Andrew. Okay, all right. Yeah. You Okay, Andrew, I'm sorry. You know what I'm talking about, but Abraham... Okay, all right, but you you were the one who sent me the thing. So you're, you still matter. You still matter. You still matter, Abraham. 
because you do your part in putting out information and stuff. So you still matter. Right. But. Why would you say that? We're we're right in the middle. Civil disobedience. That's more of a reason to ban. <laughs> that's more of a reason to ban AR-15s. The guy who's against it literally said, if you do it, we're going to come up here with the rifles. Oh, why would you do that? It's stupid. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm talking about. The people who are out here advocating for us and representing us, we don't need you to have to have a seat. You could have easily reached out to a Mike Brown. I might have been able to be the little black dot who advocates because I am a voter in Chicago, in Cook County, in Illinois, right? You might have been a, this would have been the time to call your black delegation. They already accused white people of being racist, right? This would have been a time to get some black attorneys. You, you, you see what I'm saying? This would have been a time to get your, your black, your black delegation, you know, your, your local Coleon Noirs. Hell, your instructor mics. I don't need to have a name like Coleon Noir. I have my own brand. I am my own person. How many women out there have been victims of domestic violence who now carry concealed and understand the importance of protecting themselves? You could have had them. How many of these people who have made the news in title, but not in name, who have survived carjackings and have used deadly force to survive? You could have had them. There are plenty of people you could have picked from to advocate the position of why we need this. Instead, you chose Bob Rutherford. That's not his name, but I'm just using a stereotypical white name, right? Timothy Sklerowitz who carries a gun, but has never been a victim of a crime. So you brought no victims to victim advocacy. Are you stupid? No, you're not. You're not stupid. You're not stupid. You're not stupid at all. But that's that's not smart. It's not smart. What do y'all think? Am I, am I on to something here? Am I on to something here? Check me if I'm wrong. You are in a room with a bunch of People who want to survive, who have the right to life, some who have been victims of crimes, others who have worked on victims of crimes, the doctors. You literally have a room filled with sympathy. And you didn't bring other people who have been victims of crimes in the room too? Y'all got to do better than this. You got to do better than this. This, this is a poorly thought out. You lost the battle before it even begun. <laughs> well, that's because we know we're not going to win. So don't try. You guys are horrible. 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 Not you personally, but your positions, the way you approach it. Yes. It's like picking the wrong character witness. And the one guy, you said Coleon Noir is more of a gun reviewer than a gun rights advocate lawyer lately. All right, fair enough, Stephen. I get what you're saying. There's me. Do y'all think I would have been a good advocate for it? If I, if I wouldn't be a good advocate, you could please feel free to tell me no. No pressure. What Do y'all do think I would be a good advocate to provide solutions and still support not banning assault weapons? And do y'all think I would be a good middleman to negotiate? Because that's why I was able to sit amongst the moms demand action. I was able to talk to some of the moms demand action who stuck around and heard some of the points that I was, we were able to have civil conversations. I don't, dislike them because they went what I don't have an issue with them they are not my adversary they have a right to be free from this stuff so why would I not support them are you serious <laughs> thank you Big Shay 
Yes, they did see my point. Yes, yes. When I was talking to them, we had beautiful conversations. Man, please put me in the room. Now, that, don't get me wrong. You will get some ones who they don't care what my position is. They're going to be against it. That's fine. But for the most part, man, please. I was talking about behavioral health. I was talking about a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. Now, Christoph, you ask a good question. John Crump and Mr. Guns and Gadgets are informative. You know who else is very informative? Armed Scholar. I love that man's channel. I am so serious. Armed Scholar, his channel is, is, is wonderful. He's out of California. He's a Second Amendment attorney. His channel is so wonderful. Why? It's extremely informative. Guns and Gadgets, too. His channel is very informative. But I like the lawyer side. That's why I dig Armed Scholar. But Guns and Gadgets, they got their boots to the ground, too. So both of their channels are informative. I love it. Love their channels. For reals. I do. I got no problem shouting them out. Y'all follow them. Subscribe to their channel. I love their channel, man. I'm for real. And Arm Scholar, I just got through watching his stuff before I even came live here, right? Arm Scholar, man. Oh, great dude. I don't know him personally, but his channel, ooh, super informative, right? Um, you said machine gun lawyer, Washington Law. All right, I got to check his, uh, his too. Yeah, I got to check his channel out too, right? Um, here we go. Somebody else said something I was trying to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But would any of these solutions be implemented by the government? <clears throat> yeah, they would have to be. And here's the reason why I say not implemented, but you would have to do some negotiation, right? Because if you look at Section 24 of the Illinois Criminal Code, within a thousand feet, you can't have a gun within a thousand feet because it's a, it's a no school zone. You see what I'm saying? Security officers are allowed to be within a thousand feet, provided they have a reason to be within that. Police officers are allowed. You see what I'm saying? And so if we're talking about solutions, let's put it on the record. Let's put it on the record that we in the 2A community proposed solutions. Project Veteran Overwatch. We even got a person who said they would provide free training, right? So you've got the government training. They got to go through background checks. They got to go through quarterly training. What is the importance of quarterly training? Not even the police, not even the police get quarterly gun training. I would argue not even the police get quarterly in-service training. So if we are talking about a volunteer that you don't, don't you have to have money behind? No, no, because it don't cost much. It's you, us using our free resources. We are not going in the school. We're outside the school. Yes, we are armed. Yes, we have been background checked. Yes, we have been trained. Yes, we do have perk cards, right? The same things you allow armed security officers to have in the state. They got that too. We are not going in the schools. We are on the exterior perimeter. What's up, Rob? The exterior perimeter of the school. And the only thing we will be doing is checking doors. Checking doors. That's okay, Nate. You're fine. And what I'm saying is this, you see how in that house bill, they got other laws that you could amend. You could amend section 24 of the Illinois criminal code. You could amend chapter 225, Illinois compiled statutes, act 440 section, sec, uh, uh, act 447, section 30 dash 35. You could amend those to allow for project veteran. Hey, Queen Martha, what's going on? right, to allow for Project Veteran Overwatch members who are volunteer, 
there could be policy and procedure. You could provide a statewide executive director. They could fall under the state police. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. You guys who are second, you could be doing it for a Springfield school district. You could be doing it for, it could be countywide. There are so many things that you could do with this, but it is a solution. A solution that doesn't cost much. A solution that's volunteer. A solution that provides qualified persons who have been background checked. A solution that is free, that doesn't cost the district anything. Where you're volunteering time. You're checking the outside of doors. You're calling in suspicious things. You're denying the active shooter entry. Come on, man. This is too good. This is too good. This is too good. Come on, y'all. We can do better. I said I was going to end... What are your plans for Springfield regarding the lame duck session? I heard you might be going. I'm going to the hearing. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to the hearings. Um, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna. Pro I'm definitely gonna advocate for these solutions, but I can't do it by myself because then the question is gonna be, all right, Mr. Brown, who's gonna support you? How are you gonna make it work? I could easily talk about it, but if I don't have support, how am I going to do it? You say you heard 5855 screws private security, private detective licensees. That wouldn't be true. They're amended. Uh, they're immune from that because they operate under. Yeah, I'm still on Pata. They uh, they're immune from that. They operate under different. They operate under 225 Illinois Compiled Statutes Act 447. So this wouldn't screw them because they're authorized to have a rifle for that sole purpose. This doesn't amend. If you look at the bill, they have no amendments to the private detective act. So this does not affect them. Not at all. People who don't read. And I'm not saying you Rob. That's why you said you heard because you got it from somebody else who don't read. But if they would have read the entire bill, there are no provisions in 225 ILCS 447 that this affects because private security officers are immune from that. It's all good, Patai. You good, brother. Yeah, you good. You good. Besides, this is going to be on my podcast, too. On the mic with Mike. This is a long... <laughs> it's a long podcast. But this podcast is going to get somebody through a long trip <laughs> when they got to drive down state or do something else, so... Yeah, this is not this is not going to screw up anybody. Yeah, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be gone, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to send these ideas down. Like I said, I'm in the middle. I support people being able to still own their bands and stuff like that. You know, I support that. Not the band. I'm sorry. I support people still being able to have certain weapons and stuff like that. I support a ban. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chris. I support a ban of the 30 rounds. I'm sorry. Y'all gonna be mad. I don't care. I support a ban of the 30 round and higher magazines. No practical use for that. As a police officer, I've never used it. Never had to. SWAT guys, they use different things. Before a pistol, now nah, they don't use that. Right? They don't use that. Right? Now, what I do support is, right, I don't support the 10 round. I don't support that. That's stupid, right? I think that if you look at 20 commonly purchased firearms with statistics to back, and then you look at the magazine capacities that are standard, standard, I think that the cap should be 20 for a pistol. I think that the cap should be 20 for a pistol. I'm not talking about uh, the 30 for the AR-15. That's standard, right? Remember the AR-15? 
They used to have the 20-round box magazines. See, what some people don't understand is the 30-round magazine, the 20-round magazine preceded the 30-round magazine. The 30-round, the 20-round magazine was for the AR-15 before it became 30. Ask anybody who's been in Vietnam. Go do some research. In Vietnam, I don't think they had 30-round magazines. In Vietnam, they had 20-round magazines. And then they got to the 30. Right. They got to the 30 a little bit later, but at first it was a 20 round box magazine. <laughs> Titus, you just came in the room. Be quiet. You just came in the room. You said the AK had 30 from the get go. Right. But we're not talking about the AK. We're talking about America's rifle. AK is not America's rifle. What is America's rifle? AR-15. The Armalite 15. Right. Wasn't it the Mini-14 before or the M1, something like that? Yeah, and then it became the what? AR-15. That's America's rifle. America's rifle, AR-15, right? And it's easy to use. It's easy to use. I love it. You said no, they were 20-rounders for sure. Absolutely, yeah. It was 20-rounders for sure. Yes, absolutely. It was 20-rounders when you had the M16A1. Remember with the triangle uh, uh, grips where you used to rest right in the palm of your hand, <laughs> right? Van Salt, hey, one thing you all going to learn about Instructor Mike's page, don't come right in without listening. Don't come right in without listening, right? Now, you know, doggone well, banning the 30-round magazine is not going to improve things, but that's not the point that I'm talking about that I'm advocating for that. When you come into the class, announce yourself, and listen, okay? You said, why do you need a gun with no limits that's more military type? I'm 50, and I've never needed a gun in my life. Well, Clay's Closet, I'm glad that your neighborhood is amazing where you don't need a gun. But I don't live where you live. And Clay, this will probably be the first time you will ever hear me say certain things like this, but I'm going to go there <clears throat> because... Facts are facts, and it is what it is. I'm not saying you, Clay. You could be a nice guy. But there are people who look like or equivalent to you who don't want people like me to live where people like you live. I'm not saying it's you, Clay. And I'm not calling the black car. I, those of you all who know me, I'm not Republican or Democrat. I'm not conservative or liberal. I'm independent. I'm not a racist. But I'm just saying I put the facts out there. And what I'm saying is people who, you know, there are some people who look like you who don't want me to live where you live. And so since that is the case and I have to live where I have to live, right, I need to be able to defend myself. Because people like you, who have never needed a gun in your life, rest in the blanket of freedom that people like or greater than me have served voluntarily to provide so that you can live in a place where you don't need a gun. Right? Until you need a gun. When they want to come into your closet and take all your clay. <laughs> you said I've met more people who are more scared of the wilderness than the city. You're not lying. You are not lying. Hey, yep, you are not lying. I, hey, you're not lying there. You're not lying there. You said, wait, wait, wait. You're for a cap round capacity for law enforcement magazines because the 21 rounds for the SIG M18 are beneficial. That's my new nine millimeter. Uh, no, Rob, we're not talking about that. And the 21 round magazine is not standard. It's standard in the M18 because of who you are and what you do. But that's not the standard magazine for the spring, uh, for the Six Hour P320. The standard magazine for the Six Hour P320 is a 17 round magazine. The 21 is an extended and it has a base but it's extended. It protrudes further out the magazine well. It's not flushed 
with the magazine well. So it's not standard. <clears throat> it's not standard. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> for civilians, I think 20 is good enough. No, I don't trust the government. No. You said you trust the government to have sole proprietorship over violence. No. You said not even Spring Springfield or Rock Island was there? Hey, Dre, what's going on? You said Springfield or Rock Island. What are we talking about? If you're talking about the Springfield XD or the Rock Island, no. No, no, no. No gun manufacturers were there. No. No. They were represented by the, they were represented by the National Shooting Sports Foundation, and they were there by way of Zoom. So, no, they weren't there. No. You said, he said, I didn't say that tough, did I? I just said, no one needs military-type weapons. My family grew up in Nazi Germany. No, you're good. <laughs> By the way, Rob, how are you feeling? I hope you're recovering well. I hope you're doing good. Um, no, 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 no. I, I didn't say anything for law enforcement. I didn't say anything about any restrictions on law enforcement whatsoever. No, no. I'm just talking about civilians. I'm just talking about civilians, right? For civilians. I think that the if you're going to cap magazines, right, 20. 20 has got to be the number. Why do I say 20 is the number? Because you've got the Canic that's got 19. You've got the Springfield XDM that has 19. Most have 17. Some have 15. Others have 12. The Glock 43X has 10. The Glock 43 has six. You see what I'm saying? So if you go for, if you look at the majority of them, right? No problem, no problem. If you look for a majority of them, right? Majority of them have between 15, 17, and 19. So 20 is a safe number. I would say 20 is a safe number. But anything more than 20? Yeah, you might be protruding out the magwell. You might be diving into extended territory, you know. All right. I know I said I was going to. Um, I know I said I was going to talk about some more. things. I think we had a rather robust discussion. Oh, Abraham said the second meeting, there was one gun manufacturer on the agenda, but they were a no show. See, come on, man. You know, it's just like. The, the, the Second Amendment advocacy in Illinois is super weak. It's like if we had to depend on... Now, here we go. Rhonda Ezell was good. Shouts out to Chicago Guns Matter, right? Illinois gun owners together, they're good. Shouts out to that group, right? Uh, Illinois, down south, southerners, central Illinoisans, they are good for advocating things in their area, right? But the Chicagoland, Cook County area, oh my God, you guys are weak. So weak. USCCA, weak. NRA, depending upon who's speaking, because the guy who was there speaking for the NRA this time around, his shit was so mundane, weak. It was just no emotion, no nothing, just... I'm here, here to read a statement on behalf of the NRA. Just uh, weak. Ed Sullivan was good to listen to. Ed Sullivan was funny. But, you know, I don't know Ed personally. But Ed Sullivan, he seems to, Ed Sullivan seems to have a good relationship with the uh, General Assembly. So I think Ed might be able to get some things done. In fact, he has gotten some things done. So Ed. Ed appears to be very cool. I don't know if he was a former legislator or a prosecutor or whatnot. I don't know, you know? Yes, Chris. Gun owners of America, yeah, I'm going to have to join them. I'm serious. I'm going to have to join. I'm going to have to join them because they seem to be, ooh, on the forefront of things. They really seem to be on the forefront of things. The NRA... The advocacy is just horrible. It's just horrible. 
no boots on it. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not just going to totally crap on the NRA on this channel because if it wasn't for the NRA, we wouldn't even have concealed carry in Illinois. They funded and spearheaded that movement with, you know, Otis McDonald and Rhonda Ezell and the, and, the, and the the names, you know, who were willing to be litigants in the cases and stuff like that. You know, so <clears throat> shouts out to the NRA. They could do better. They could do they could do better. Right. So those of you all go ahead and join the gun owners of America. Uh, if you're looking for. All right, we're ready to end. We're ready to end. I take my book to sleep. Um, if we're looking for, and I think the reason, hey, JFB, what would I normally be doing by now? Yawning, eyes ready to go. I actually had a nap before <laughs> I went live, so this wouldn't happen. Um, but uh, if you're looking for concealed carry, I don't want to call it insurance, but if you're looking for concealed carry after shooting services for you, CCW safe. Link in the bio. Link in the bio, okay? Or link in the description, right? Link in the description. I love CCW safe. Uh, I'm using CCW safe right now for some things, right? CCW safe is amazing. Um, I can't advocate for USCCA. I I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't. Um, so CCW safe. Okay. Um, yeah, CCW safe. That's what I, yeah, for sure. If you are in need, some of y'all already knew where I was going. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had to pick this big thing up. Here we go. MaxSafes.com. Oh, should be crying, but I just can't let it show. MaxSafes.com. So why do I like this safe, right? Link is in the description too, right? I like this safe because you have three points of entry. You got key, you got touch, right? And you got biometric fingerprint vein. Biometric fingerprint vein. This is not a biometric safe where it's registering your fingerprints. It's registering the veins in your fingers, right? Now, this one I got where it's not making any noise. But if you want the noise, there you go. There we go. Okay. You just hold that first button. Turns it off. And now it's silent. Okay. You're not touching the glass. And that's what happens when it doesn't work. Let's just say that happens. You're able to still get access, right? The link is in the bio, right? And they got a sale going on right now. You said what's wrong with USCCA? Let me tell you what's wrong with USCCA. For me. Yeah, you can attach it to a nightstand or a drawer, right? They have other safes too. One of the reasons I do not like USCCA. If you're going through clear and present danger stuff. <laughs> Shanice said, yes, it will work. It has been hot sauce tested. Yes. If you're going through clear and present danger stuff, USCCA cannot help you. If you're going through administrative stuff, USCCA cannot help you. They can't. And, and it's sad to say they, they can't help you. I know some people going through clear and present danger stuff now. USCCA cannot help you. There's a special fund that helps people that you have to tell them what's going on and then you can apply for this special money that has nothing to do with the policy you paid for. That to me, huge turnoff, huge turnoff. I can't do that. I can't go. I cannot go because in Illinois, yeah, it's possible you will have to use your firearm. Sure. Depending upon where you live, 
But what if you're in an area? What if you're in an area where you're, you know, your wife or your husband, mostly your wife, or a family member files some kind of red flag law. Well, USCCA will say, we provide red flag defense. Well, in Illinois, the back door, the back door to red flag is the clear and present danger system. USCCA does not defend against that. They do not. Other states have just red flag. Illinois has red flag and clear and present danger. And when I tell you in this hearing, they are going to be going on overdrive next year, promoting and working out the kinks of the firearm restraining order and the clear and present danger use, they are going to be pushing that even more. They say the numbers are low. They need those numbers to be high. They are going to push that. They are going to push that. And so... CCW safe is what I recommend. Why? Because when it is time for you to get an attorney who can help you through that process, CCW safe will pay for that up to a limit, of course. And it shouldn't cost that much, but they will pay for it. Also, Another reason I support CCW safe over them all is this. Depending upon your particular situation where you had no choice but to use force. You will probably get arrested. If you do get arrested, mm, it's important to know, Titus. If you do get arrested, you need a lawyer who's going to defend you and one who's really good. CCW Safe will cover that. In fairness, USCCA covers that too. I'm fair. I'm very fair. But what if you're convicted? What, what if you're convicted? Will USCCA cover you during the appeal? I know for a fact, CCW safe will. Because you may not get justice until the appeal. Even if you look at Illinois House Bill 5855, you're fine, Titus. You're all good, brother. Even if you look at Illinois House Bill 5855, where are gun advocates expecting to get justice at the Supreme Court of the United States level? Isn't that the appeal? Mm -hmm. You may not see justice until the appeal because at the trial court level, there are so many things that go on that could affect the outcome of your case. You may not get justice until there are seven detached and neutral magistrates to look at the record that has hopefully been properly preserved by your defense attorney. Some issues that might have been overlooked. 
some irreversible errors that might have happened. You need attorneys who's going to continue to fight for you while you're serving out your sentence until you get justice. That's what people don't think about. Well, I'm white. I don't have to think about that, Mike. The justice system works for me. Until you shoot a black person. Oh! Until you shoot your wife. Until you claim self-defense, but you don't have the evidence to be able to prove it. But you really were the defender. You just were in a bad area. Or maybe you saw the thing that looks like cameras, but that camera ain't worked in 15 years. <gasps> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, yeah. Um, CCW safe. Link in the description. Okay. All right, y'all. Three hours, 15 minutes. I've taken up too much of your time already. Appreciate you. It's 11.49. What do y'all think about tonight's show? Was it pretty good? Those of you all watching, let me know in the comments. Those of you all listening, let me know. Let me know. Right? Let me know what you think. Right? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Okay? Ooh. I'm going to go. Uh, I got some grape juice calling my name. And it is juice. All right. This is Instructor Mike, and you've been trained. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Mike Brown or Instructor Mike. Subscribe to my YouTube page, Instructor Mike. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Yes Mike Said It. Get your butt in somebody's concealed carry class. Nobody's job to protect you but you. Chris, I appreciate you. Shanice said, finally a yawn. <laughs> uh Cam W, I appreciate the info, like, and sub. Thank you. Very good and informative. Outstanding, outstanding. I appreciate you all. Until next time, you all stay safe. Get your butt in somebody's concealed carry class. Nobody's job to protect you but you. I'll see you. What's going on, you? This is Instructor Mike. You can follow me on Facebook at Mike Brown or Instructor Mike. Follow it me on could Facebook. be you as a citizen, and you walk up and you see somebody. You look heavy. I don't know. Create special. That must be. But it's good to know that this can handle the high pressure rounds of a bloody. Make eye contact with me. He's still trying to get it open a couple of times. So chill. I almost forgot to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. I couldn't leave without doing that. I'm sorry. Look at y'all. I thought I was gone. I cannot leave without wishing y'all a Merry Christmas, right? So I forgot. Merry Christmas. Larry Christmas. Tommy Christmas. Merry Christmas, right? And have a happy new year. Of course, I'm going to be going live before the end of the year, right? So I wasn't gone, gone, but I couldn't leave without doing that. So I hope you all have a wonderful night and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.